I'd like to call to order the City of Southfield regular meeting of the Planning Commission for June 22, 2022. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Bernudi. Present. Ms. Goodwin Dye. Present. Mr. Griffiths. Here. Mr. Huntington. Present. Mr. Martin. Present. Dr. Stevens Gunn. Present. Mr. Willis. Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum to conduct business this evening. Duty Chair would move for approval of the agenda for uh, June 22, 2022. I second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by uh, Commissioner Willis and second by Commissioner Bernoulli that we approve tonight's agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Spence, can I have announcements and communications? Uh, I don't have any at this time, ma'am. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so the first item on your agenda uh, is twofold. Uh, it's a special use and a site plan. Uh, the first item that will, well, I'll present them together. Um, you will have to vote on them separately. Uh, the PSLU does have a public hearing. Uh, the site plan does not. Uh, so again, we'll start out uh, with PSLU 22-0002. Uh, with the accompanying site plan, PSP 22-0005. Uh, the petitioner is Rosetta Building Company, uh, parcel 2412153019. Uh, this is a vacant piece of property on the east side of Southfield Road between Edwards and Windflower. Uh, existing zoning is B3 General Business. The special use request is to allow for a standalone restaurant with a drive-through. Uh, the site plan itself uh, is for the construction of a new Culver's restaurant with a drive-through along with the regular amenities of parking, sidewalks, bike racks, etc. Uh, this is a little closer view of the property. <clears throat> directly north is a small shopping center. Uh, directly to the east is one of the uh, multiple family buildings in the Springhaven development. Uh, to the south is a shopping center and across the street we have some uh, office type uses. This is a view of the existing conditions of the property. Again, as I had noted, it's completely vacant. B3 general business for zoning. Future land use is the north south field sub area. <clears throat> this is the proposed site plan uh, for the site. Again, it is a, a proposal for a restaurant with a drive through. Uh, you can see the restaurant portion is on the left hand side of the site or would be the east side of the site. Entrance to the property coming off of Windflower. Um, one of the reasons for that is because uh, we do have a light at Windflower and Southfield Road, so much easier to control traffic coming in and out of the area uh, than directly off of Southfield Road. Uh, we do have the pedestrian connections from Southfield Road to the building itself. Uh, they have the required stacking spaces, uh, the required um, parking spaces uh, on the property. Um, w there is one thing that I will add, at least from a site plan standpoint, um, there is a requirement for a sidewalk along Windflower. Uh, ordinance does require that, so that uh, will need to be uh, shown and constructed on the property. And there's also a fence requirement along the side street as well. Those are the, the fences strictly required with regard to the restaurant type use. Generally, you would not have a fence there. Under the special land use requirements for restaurants, a fence is required on all sides. Uh, you have a wall on the south side, you have a wall on the east side. You will have a, a fence along Southfield Road and then also the fences required along Windflower. With that, uh, again, the public hearing is for the special land use only. So what we're dealing with is just the uh, restaurant type use 
on the property with the drive through Is your petitioner here? Yep, so the petitioner opportunity to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Andy Andre from Triumph Engineering, 10775 South of Saginaw Street in Grand Blanc, Michigan. I'm here on behalf of the applicant Rosetta Building Company. Uh, I'm the engineer that was working on the project and has developed the uh, site plan that you see before you. Um, first of all, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Rosetta. Rosetta is, will be uh, Andrew, who's the uh, applicant on this. He'll be owner-operator of the location. He has three other locations as well, Culver's Restaurants, uh, one in Livonia, Rochester Hills, and also uh, one that came online not too uh, long ago in Oxford as well. And so long established, he's, he's uh, owner-operator uh, within the industry, knows it, very um, enthused by this location here along uh, Southfield. And... Um, like to talk a little bit about uh, I, I think the the summary of the project uh, was very good uh, we are agreeable to uh, those a couple of additions with the fence and the sidewalk I was actually working on that sidewalk location uh, today and, and working on that um, with that uh, with the location that we have there we don't have very much frontage along Southfield so our, our access will be coming off of a wild uh, windflower there and one thing to note is that is a signalized intersection which is great I mean that that way we have uh, control in and out of the the site as well we have quite a bit of landscaping that we've provided we've maxed out the the location uh, landscaping there's a lot of easements when you really get deep into the property there's quite a few easements that cross that property makes it makes the development of it a little bit challenging but we're able to uh, accommodate that and maximize out the landscaping we have also indicated that uh, with the adjacent multifamily residential we have an existing wall that's there we're going to maintain that wall we're going to provide plantings on our side of the wall that'll provide buffer both for uh, noise and, and visual and then we're also proposing plantings on the other side on the uh, multifamily side so we'll, we're double uh, buffering, uh, getting that layered effect uh, through through landscaping there. We'll be able to comply with uh, requirements of any utilities. There's utilities that were already subbed to it. We'll uh, comply with the stormwater management requirements from Oakland County. So we feel that the the uh, plan that we've uh, provided with the uh, amendments that we're agreeable to can be a great addition to uh, the city of Southfield here. Thank through you, Madam Chair. The, through the Chair, Madam. Yes. Could you just um, reiterate the hours of operation proposed? Sure. Let me uh, let me bring up Kurt. He's the district manager. He could he's uh, involved in uh, the location on all three of those. He can probably speak to that, Terry. Um, so the hours of operation are ten thirty. Could you give your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry, Kurt uh, Brunner, sixty three uh, West Dallas, Madison Heights, Michigan, uh, district manager. Um, and to the question for hours operations, 10:30 in the morning till 10 at night, seven days a week. Yes. 10:30 a.m. to 7. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Yep. Monday through Sunday. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any community input regarding uh, PSL U22-0002? If you'd like to have comments, would you please line up on this side, in this aisle. You have three minutes to share your comments. When you approach the podium, we need your name and your address. And you have three minutes per commenter. Yes, I'm first. My name is Jim Esnault, and I am an owner in Windflower Communities. My address is 17741 Windflower. So as it relates to the special use, I have a couple of um, issues with that. One, we are not, haven't been confirmed yet. It's been told by Southfield Police Department that Windflower Drive is actually a private drive. And we need to confirm if it's private 
from Southfield Road or at the um, turnabout once you actually enter um, Windflower communities. So there is a concern there as it relates to egress and ingress rights because if it is considered a private road from Southfield, then the egress and ingress rights would have to be um, discussed and see where the legal um, responsibility falls in with that. Uh, second is um, private nuisance because being living in the community, there are increased congestions. We're already having issues with the Starbucks traffic going in and out, lining up to get into Starbucks drive through. So at some times when you're coming out of the um, roundabout to exit onto Southfield Road, there's congestion there from Starbucks traffic. Um, we're thinking that it could, it's a restaurant, so you're gonna have an increase in trash, whether it's immediately surrounding Culver's or on the roadway, but either way, you're definitely gonna have an increase in trash in the community. Um, the noise level, for the homes directly uh, behind where Culver's is, where the wall is, um, the gentleman did mention that they would put up buffers, which would be plants, but you're still gonna hear the drive-through speakers and maybe noise from outside seating. There may be loitering that we will have to deal with, the smell from Culver's permeating it over into the complex, and um, that's about it as it relates to potential private nuisances from the building of Culver's. You have 30 seconds. I'm all set. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Marja Williams. I also live in Spring Haven Villas at 17666 Windflower. And I will reiterate some of the concerns that Jim just told us. Um, so going into and out of the complex, with the Starbucks traffic that we have there and other stores that are over in that division that's built there, um, there have been times where I have seen near accidents or been in near accidents myself with people coming and going out of the entrance into that complex without paying attention. So I could only imagine if there's gonna be an entrance from Windflower Drive going into that Culver's or coming out of that Culver's, now there's gonna be a potential for accidents from both directions. Uh, that is a really big concern for me. Also, the light that is there is probably about two and a half, three minutes long. Uh, trying to get out of the complex and having to fight with the traffic that is coming from both sides of the entrance into where we live is a problem. Um, also, to his point, the amount of noise, the smell, the trash, we've all lived over in that community for likely 12 to 15 years, every single one of us, and we've never had to deal with that, which is part of the reason why we love it so much. It's quiet, it's clean, and we feel safe. You're opening a restaurant in that area that is gonna open up our direct neighborhood to people that are gonna have access to it that may not have even noticed that it was there before, um, that would be going into the neighborhood. So there's a lot of safety issues for me as a resident of Spring Haven Villas. And that's all I have. Thank you. Good evening, I am Eric Jenkins. I am a resident of Spring Haven Villa. Your address? Address is 29999 Marigold Drive. Uh, my unit, uh, my front door, will face essentially Culver's. Uh, I'm not excited about the probability of the lighting that will go into the parking lot, the lighting from the signs, and the aforementioned traffic. Uh, I'd like to bring to your attention as well on Windflower Drive, there is only one inbound lane and two outbound lanes, which when I was part of the Homeowners Association, we paid to have markers put on the three uh, on three breps points one to turn right one to stay straight and one to turn left and one to come in and one to stay straight or to enter and turn left and one coming inbound 
if you're going to have this restaurant have one lane to come in, people aren't going to follow the rules. We've had several nearby crashes. I've actually had my vehicle hit by someone coming in the wrong way. It's not a good experience. Um, you're talking about improving the, in, increasing the amount of people. From another traffic perspective, people may get frustrated and try to go through the roundabout only to find in our neighborhood there's no way out on the backside, so they're going to just keep driving around, driving around, driving around. That's a problem. And then just the overall experience of having a fast food restaurant open till 10 o'clock at night. Um, we're all starting to emerge from what was the pen, well, what is the pandemic. We're all starting to get more out more. We're starting to hang out more, starting to do more things outside. I'm not excited about the probability of the loitering, the noise, and just the overall population. There are several other plots of land up and down Southfield Road. There's other out lots that should be considered. This property was owned by TCF Bank. Years ago, the plan was they were going to put a bank there. That wasn't terribly exciting, but we know banker's hours end at 5, 6 on an off day, no weekends. ATM traffic, that's about all we were dealing with. But now we're talking about a full service fast food restaurant, a full menu, all the things that they serve, all times of day. I'm not in favor of this proposal, and I ask that the commission give uh, weight and credence and consideration to our comments. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lamar Willis, 29971 Marigold Drive. I'm also uh, one of the residents at Spring Haven Villas. This community is a quiet community, as you heard. It is, uh, we try to keep it very clean, and uh, we're very proud uh, to maintain it. Uh, the project that I see right here, as it is, has a lot of problems. Um, one of the problems you've already heard is Windflower. We've had several accidents on Windflower, whether it's during the wintertime or even during the summertime because of the way that the flow of traffic is. Even the complex across, they have two ways to get in. They have one coming from Southfield and one coming from Windflower. This plan has no, act, no exit or entrance to win, uh, off of Southfield. That means a bottleneck. That's a problem. This is a residential area. If you're talking about hours of 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m., there needs to be some consideration about how late this is going to stay open, especially on the weekends and Sundays. Other businesses closed. Even the McDonald's is closed at 10 o'clock. So to have a restaurant open that late in our community is really a problem. This parcel of land is not as large as the parcel of land across from it. As you can see, we have part of our condos are actually on the back end of that side, on the right side there. On the other side, it goes back even further. So it's not the same amount of space as you think um, as the, on the side where Starbucks has their drive through. Um, so to close with this, um, consideration should be really given to the people that live in the community. We got the letter, but that wasn't a lot of uh, uh, information that we, we couldn't really respond to it. We're just here complaining and giving our, our, our complaints. But there's a lot of issues in this, and somehow something needs to be said or, uh, or said to us or the community so we can know what's going on. But as this is right here, there's a lot of problems. Um, safety, trash, and it comes down to who's going to pay for it. So I'm, just, I'm on the HOA board association, and I know we have to cover some costs. There's going to be some issues with that. So I need us to really come together and talk about some things. Uh, but as of right now, this plan is not good for us. You have 30 seconds. I see it. It's not good for us. So please consider the owners, and um, we will talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sherlyn French, and I reside at 30019 Marigold Drive. I am actually two doors down from Eric. I've been there 14 years in total. And yes, I do disagree as well because I can't even picture, I mean, I had almost had an accident when someone's coming out 
and I'm trying to get out and they're trying to come in or, and it's just so much going on in that little area. Um, I just, I think of teenage drivers, you know, somebody coming in, in the out and they're trying to get out, there's an accident. I did actually, my daughter's friend, he did have an accident. Someone hit him and um, that was years ago. And um, I just made sure he was okay. But I, I don't think that it's safe for safety reasons. I just don't think it's wise for it to be a restaurant right there on the corner. We go in and out, we have a lot of problems already in the morning going to work, you know, trying to get out. And like she stated before, the light is about two to three minutes long. So it actually deals with more of the traffic going down, up and down South for a road, instead of us getting out on the road. Um, I just don't feel it's comfortable. Or again, for safety reasons, I just doesn't, don't think it's a good idea at all. So um, I'm against it. And like he stated, just keep us informed. And I mean, I would, I would have hoped a lot more people would have came today, but it's, it's not comfortable, you know, knowing that if you're a single mom, you're at home and you got to listen to, you know, other people out and about or got to worry about your a teenage child or a young adult child coming in or, you know, in traffic just right there. And it's just horrible every morning. So, and evening sometimes, but like he stated, the store is closed at a certain time on that side. But to deal with it on both sides, it wouldn't be feasible at all. So hopefully we can come to some understanding. And again, it's a lot of other areas, Evergreen, down the street from Fridays. It's, it's other areas for, you know, for this restaurant. So I totally disagree with it. I'm against it. And Thank you. It. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Arwilda Smith. I reside at 17791 Windflower Drive. I've been a resident of Spring Haven for 15 years. This, my main concern is the traffic because it's really not that long of a street from Southfield to the roundabout. Only about two or three, two cars or so can get in there before it's a problem. I've been in near misses with the people going into Starbucks because they come in off of Southfield and they'll go across Windflower and they'll have the line backed up over there and you can't get out to go to Southfield Road. Now the light from, Wind, uh, from Spring Haven to Southfield is only about a minute, if that much, it's real quick. You can only get two, maybe three cars out when the light change. The main, uh, on, on Southfield Road, the lights, like they said, is two or three minutes. We only have a couple of cars to get out before the lights change. So uh, then people come in on the wrong side, they come in, go out, and, and when they're going out, they line up all the way across like it's a one way and it's not. But it's, the, the traffic is a problem right there, period. Then a lot of, a lot of people come in, they think they're supposed to go to turn around and come back out and go into Starbucks. But Starbucks is the main problem with this traffic and, and it's like real short. That little piece of street is really, really short. You can't get that much traffic on there and it's gonna be a problem. And I concur with everything that has been said by the other people. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Ted Kay. I reside at 30031 Marigold Drive. I am one of the original um, homeowners of the Spring Haven Villas. I was uh, part of the um, board of the association from uh, its beginning. I'm not going to reiterate everything that everyone has said because I believe all those are the problem. Uh, and my biggest issue is the um, entrance. I have had many situations where um, I've been stuck at the light where people coming off of Southfield Road has assumed for whatever reason that that's a one-way street and um, there are cars uh, in the left lane that are going to turn left and the people cannot come in. I can imagine now with the folks coming out of Culver's with the way it's situated um, off of Windflower that they will be coming uh, out of Culver and not really knowing that they have to either get to the center lane or the right lane 
to either go straight or to turn right, and they may think that their immediate lane is the one that they can also take going out, which would uh, tie up traffic. I also have the same concerns regarding the uh, Starbucks traffic. I have been um, in the circular area for up to three minutes waiting for the people to go into Starbucks. And uh, the problem with Starbucks is you have people going in line coming from where the Jets Pizza is, as well as coming off of Windflower, which further ties it up even longer. And um, that is a real problem. The other issue that I have is people coming out of Culver's, as, as was mentioned before, there's only one way in and one way out of our complex. And I've had people literally drive in circles and ask me, how do I get out of here? Because they thought there was an exit at the back. So I can foresee people coming out of Culver's making a right-hand turn going through our um, um, community and just trying to find their way out and while they're there throwing things out the window. So I have a serious concern um, about all of that. Uh, our neighborhood is pristine, it's neat. Uh, I thought it was a private area also, but I am against this um, and I think we ought to rethink it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Benuti. Wait, could we have the applicant come, come up forward? Oh, sure. To answer any questions that the commission may have. Um, you need to officially close the public hearing as well. Before or after he speaks? Um, before. Okay. If there's, make one more call to the public. And if okay. there's no more public, let's close the public hearing, then we can have discussion. Okay. Uh, additional community input. Is there any additional community input? No. Good evening. My name is Harmon Gunther, uh, 19101 Green Spruce, Southfield, Michigan. I'm president of the Cranbrook Village Homeowners Association. Um, my, we had a board meeting last night, and I. Uh, told them about this new restaurant, and most of our board members were enthused about a new restaurant in this area. Now, mo like most of the residents here said, they've been there about 14, 15 years because before the, the development was built was a park, uh, uh, what's it called? A mobile trailer home park. park. Trailer park, yeah. right. So. They had concerns when they were building the buildings about uh, waste underneath, right? More of the landfill. Now, we know that TLC Bank was going to put a bank in that area, which that idea fell through because across the street is the Chase Bank, which over time is now closed for the last year or so. So I might uh, have a proposal for Culver's, and it's going to cost them quite a bit just to move across Southfield Road, tear down the Chase Bank, and put the restaurant there. Because then you have the traffic light, you have two entrances into Southfield Road from Webster and Southfield itself. So that is an idea, which is going to cost them quite a bit more money because they have to demo that existing building and put up a new one. So that is my idea anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Marjo again, 176661 Flower. Um, I just really want to reiterate that there is only one entrance in and out of our subdivision. So when there is an accident there, we're going to be trapped in the subdivision until the accident is cleared. And it is not going to be an if. It will happen. So for us as residents, a lot of this becomes ease and safety. We need to be able to leave our homes when we need to leave. And we need to be able to get back in when we need to get back in. So one of my neighbors actually stated that. I just wanted to really underline and reiterate that fact. We will get trapped in our homes if something happens at that intersection. Thank you. Eric Jenkins, 2999 
9 Marigold Drive. As far as the um, easement on Windflower to Southfield Road, that is uh, a private road. Uh, we know, as I was on the HOA for since its inception, and we paid the money to have the markings put on the road. Our HOA paid to have the striping done because the city would not come out and do it. So that is our road. So if they're going to expand it, mark it, do something, it's still two and a half lanes of traffic. Um, it is going to be difficult. And just like Marjo said, if there's an when there's an accident, when there's an accident there, we won't be able to get in or out until whoever's responsible decides to clear it. We've had accidents off of Southfield Road, people in the wintertime hitting our uh, light poles. That's our light pole on the corner that we pay for, that we operate, that we pay for the light. There's also one inside the egress, right at the um, turnabout, roundabout. That's our light pole that we've had hit and knocked down uh, from reckless drivers speeding up and down Southfield Road. Um, we're not able to, you know, we need some consideration uh, for that plan uh, for when that happens again. And it is evidence, evidentiary of uh, restaurant patrons who's going to pay for that because it's not our born responsibility. The city of Southfield doesn't pay for it. Um, and we just want that to be known. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'll close the public hearing and the petitioner is going to come again. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Again, Andy, Andre. Um, I think the, the points that were brought up are, are true and they're valid. I mean, um, anytime there's a, a new development, it can uh, stir up some emotions as to how is it going to affect me. And one of the things is while we, we think of um, all of these restaurants being in the same vein, Culver's is a little bit different than what we consider a true fast food. So a couple points I just I wanted to bring up is in regards to the traffic. There's one entrance there now. Whether this development occurs or not, there's still only one entrance. And so if there's uh, any issues or anything about being blocked, it's the same concern whether it's now or whether the development occurs. And so I, I, I don't see that as being a huge impediment for, for what we're talking about with this, um, with the signalized intersection. The, um, the, the just to give you an idea, inside dining, they do a lot of metrics. They have a lot of metrics when it comes to how they track the customers. Uh, Culver's is a fast, casual type of restaurant. It's not as fast food because it's actually fresh food cooked to order. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Hence, that's why we need a little bit more stacking. That's why it looks a little bit different than what you would consider a traditional fast food. Inside dining is typically uh, about a 15 minutes is what they, what they have. Um, by the time somebody comes in, orders, by the time they leave, it's about a 15 minute time frame. The drive through, their target, uh, I was talking with Kurt, is their internal target is four minutes. That's one vehicle every four minutes that would be coming in and out. At the, that's, a, that's at a peak time, mind you. The, the inside, the drive through is 55 to 60 percent. Of, of the overall business. And so if that intersection and that light is two and a half to three minutes, which I, I believe I, I believe exactly what they're saying, it seems pretty reasonable there. That's only one, that's less than one vehicle per light cycle. That's, that's not that much. And so um, while, while it looks like it could be, it's a little bit different of a model as opposed to a fast food where, they're, where the, the food's already prepped and they're just moving them through. This is a little bit, uh, different where it takes a little bit longer and with that should help with any um, possible traffic concerns Trash is always an issue odor is always an issue um, uh, Any any type of that the dumpster enclosure is shown on the plan. It's on the south side of the building It's actually almost looks integrated to the building. It looks uh, uh, very similar exact similar materials uh, It's fully enclosed uh, don't anticipate any issues with any uh, trash getting out or that they pick up is one to two times a week And so it's not as though it's going to be overflowing or that it's very uh, managed in a very um, high level and uh, Even even you Kurt was mentioning Culver's has an extremely high standard when it comes to the cleanliness both inside and outside of their uh, of their stores and facilities 
they, um, he was mentioning even when they have some staining or anything like that on the, on the pavement, on the concrete, they actually scrub that. They're required to, and it's something that they do regularly at the, at the other locations. So I think that those are critical uh, things, knowing that that operator is somebody who does that, Culver's holds them to that standard, and they, and they certainly uh, do uh, follow those guidelines. The lighting is always a concern, absolutely. Everything is LED lighting. Everything is going to be low level. There will not be any shine onto the adjacent property. I can, I can guarantee that. The, um, the, talking about the uh, vagrancy or outdoor seating, we have a very small outdoor seating. It's actually on the northwest corner of the building. It's on the west side. So um, it's only a couple seats. There's not that much out there. So they've had no, uh, they've had no issues at their other three locations. You know, I even asked, I said, Kurt, do you, have you had, even had, the, had to have the police called or anything? No. And so they've, and they've been in operation for years. They have had no, uh, no issues with loitering, with any type of vagrancy. Um, they've had no police issues come up at the other three locations. I think that's important to note. One of the, one of the concerns came up is, and this is, this is valid, you don't want people uh, heading through you know, heading into a uh, residential neighborhood when they should be going out. That's really an easy fix. That's what we call wayfinding signs. It's directional signs. As somebody comes out of the, of the property, there's a directional sign directing them to turn left. That, that is the, the best mechanism to keep anybody from going there. And, and most of the time, everybody's coming in. They're going to be coming in off of, of Southfield. They're going to be going out in the same direction. I don't think there's going to be too much confusion there. And it, it was brought up by, um, uh, he's, he's absolutely right, that is, a, that is a private drive. There are access um, rights that were, that were granted over that. So there's ingress, egress uh, granted as part of it with this parcel. But it is a private drive, absolutely. I, I, I did take a second look at that, and, and he was absolutely correct. Are those um, easements uh, listed on the site plan? There is. There's a library page yeah. that's on so that. So we'll, we'll verify that yeah. as well. Yeah, and we, we have no problem. We can, we can supply that information. But there's a library page, Terry, mm -hmm. that, uh, that indicates that. So um, I, I think, I think the, the concerns are, are real. They're valid. Probably a lot of it, and what I'm hearing, a lot of it has to do with, um, with the Starbucks and what's going on there. Again, this is different. It's not a Starbucks. It operates differently. It'll, it'll, will it generate traffic? Absolutely. But it's not generating to the traffic and the level of something that's there. Or what could be there even within a B3 zoning that, that is permitted by use. They'll, you know, the, the trash, the property, the sightliness of it will all be maintained, handled, noise. One concern is the speakers. That's a, that's a valid concern. Those are adjustable. Those speakers are adjustable. Um, also, with, with the location, they're on the south side, not facing the residential. It's actually facing to the south. And so anything directed there, we, as I mentioned, we do have the landscaping um, on the west side of the wall. We have the wall. We're opposing the landscaping on the east side. Um, that goes the same with the, you know, as I mentioned, with the lighting, LED, shielded, no... Uh, lighting directed to the adjacent properties. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I, I think it's good to have that real-time information, that operational information of the vehicles coming in and out. And while um, I, 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 can, I can tell you I don't feel that this is going to be with the number of vehicles that we're talking about, uh, and, and this is not a, you know, you, don't, you, you see peaks that come in and out that um, we're, we're not talking about a, a mass amount of vehicles and it can be uh, managed with that signalized intersection. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I uh, appreciate the time. Be happy to answer any questions. Madam Chair, if I may, I do have a letter here that at least I would like to read into the record as well. Uh, even though it, it goes over a lot of the same things and issues that uh, the residents have mentioned, I do believe that uh, this person did send this in and I do want to at least get it into the record as well. Thank you. With your permission, thank you. Okay, this is dated June 20th, 2022, to the Planning Department. Uh, written comments, special land use for of Rosetta Building Company to allow standalone Culver Restaurant. 
Dear Southfield Planning Committee, my work obligation has prevented my attendance to the Wednesday, June 22nd meeting on the above stated subject. Appreciate the opportunity to voice my concerns on the proposed standalone Culver restaurant with drive through which are enumerated below. Proposed location for the restaurant and drive through does not yield itself to the required land needed. Intense traffic gridlock. The Windflower Drive is currently congested with busy activity of customers at Ark and Sweet uh, and Barbecue, pickup only, and notably Starbucks with both lobby and drive through services. More times than not, cars circle the building, Starbucks, and a line of cars extend onto Windflower. This is an everyday occurrence. Invasion of private property of the owners, renters of Springhaven Villas as the customers will seek out and park in the residential property. Limited access through way to, to Springhaven residents and owners. Increased noise from additional traffic. Unwanted and undesirable smells from food storage preparation and refuse. Many saturation, many saturation of restaurants and dining uh, drive through occupy and service the area. While not an exhaustive list, restaurants are Applebee's Bar and Grill, The Jagged Fork, Big Boy, Mesa Mediterranean Grill, Boston Market, Red Olive Restaurant in National Coney, and the drive through restaurants like McDonald's, Taco Bell, Detroit Fish and Shrimp, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, Captain Jay's Fish and Chicken. Location sought by Rosetta Building Company to build yet another restaurant does not foster the well being and safety of the, South, of the Southfield or Springhaven residents. Res uh, respectfully submitted, Elta Gordon, concerned uh, owner of Springhaven Villa. Thank you. Yes, uh, through the chair, um, we hold these public hearings to discover things that we might not be aware of. There was a lot of legitimate issues that were raised today. One of the issues that I was not aware of was the traffic congestion with Starbucks. Um, and there's some other legitimate issues. Some of them can be resolved. Some we need a little more investigation. I'm going to recommend that we postpone to a no date certain will allow the Planning Commission to ask additional questions and request that the applicant do a traffic impact study. In light of just the traffic, the signalization of the proposed use and any potential conflicts with Starbucks so that we can answer that unequivocally. Um, maybe there's some other mitigation issues that, that can be done with wind, wind flower exit and egress. Uh, if you haven't already, um, we typically recommend that you meet with the Homeowners Association um, and I don't know if you've already met with the board, but I would also recommend that this pause while the traffic impact study is um, being done, that they meet with the homeowners to try to mitigate some of the other legitimate issues. That all being said, I do want the Planning Commission after opportunity to ask any additional questions, but our recommendation at this time is to postpone to a no date certain, and then once we have a, a date of when the traffic impact statement will be uh, completed and the other um, assignment, then we can reschedule this and we will re-notify um, the public. Okay. That's my recommendation. All right, um, Commissioner Benuti. I have two questions for you. Uh, the first is uh, I'd like to know if you have other locations that are as close to a private road and a community as this? Right, that's a, that's a good question. So the location in Oxford comes off of private drive um, and it uh, has residential to the, to the west of it. So um, it's, it's similar, a little bit similar, but um, uh, a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger piece of property as well. Um, but we, we do have, that, uh, we do have that, that same kind of situation in Oxford. Thank you. And the other, uh, on your proposal, you indicated that it would be a drive-through as well as other amenities. Can you explain what those amenities would be? Sure. I, I think probably that's going to the um, incorporating the landscaping features in it. We do have the, the bike racks and, and those other uh, features within it. I think we have some of the, the landscaping that extends beyond the property. Um, I, I think those are the those are the uh, items that the applicant was referring to. Thank you. Thank you. Are you. Commissioner Goodwin Dye. Yes, um, I have one question. 
um, because one of the concerns was trash. Mm -hmm. um, do you often have your employees come out to canvas the parking lot and eating areas for trash? That, that's correct. Um, Kurt, can you uh, come up here for a moment? Again, probably Kurt can probably talk to you about the operations, how they deal with it at the other locations and be very specific with that. Um, so yeah, we have a, um, a porter in the morning that comes in and makes sure that uh, everything is cleaned on the outside, trash is picked up on the parking lot, everything. Um, typically there's two outside garbage um, bins for people to use. Um, and they're patrolled in the figure eight that the managers walk and make sure that if they are full that they're emptied also. Um, so yeah, it's patrolled a lot. There's, like I said, Culver standards are quite high when it comes to cleanliness on the outside. Um, if we don't meet those standards, we're marked down. Um, so we're, we're very diligent when it comes to that, so. So you're saying that it's, it's canvassed in the morning before you open? Correct. Um, you canvas the trash cans only, not the parking lot? Parking lot as well, yeah. So it's, we have a list of things we have to walk through. Um, parking lot, if you know, somebody throws their cup out or what have you, um, then they have to walk, the managers have to walk a figure, out, a figure eight throughout the day um, and check for that sort of thing and, and pick up and parking lot and, and all that sort of stuff, yeah. Okay, and um, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Bernudi asked the question that I was going to ask, but I, I would like to know um, how close are your other locations that butt up to a community? How close are they? Are they as close as what um, it would be here in Southfield, or is there more distance so that it prevents some of the issues as the lighting, the smell, um, some of those issues? Right, that's, that, that's a good question. And I think regardless, uh, I, I said probably Oxford is the location that's probably the, the closest and relatable to it. It is a little bit larger piece of property. Um, I think one of, the, one of the things when it comes to uh, the smell is it's especially when it comes to the trash it's very controllable it's controlled through their operations the lighting is another thing that whether it's this location or it's a different lo another location we approach it the same i've, I've worked on uh, with the applicant I've, I've been the engineer on these other properties as well and so we approach it very much the same lighting we have to mitigate any type of lighting that occurs so the light fixtures that are selected are LED, they're, they're screened, they actually have the housing, so they're screened and they're directed downward, they don't shine out. And so um, these measures that we take are very similar regardless of the location. And so I think uh, we, we certainly can apply these uh, all, at all these, at all these same uh, features all to this location as well. I, I will. I will say this is a little bit closer. It's it's more uh, urban for certain. It is this, and to me it looks, um, uh, you know. But again, we're taking those mitigative measures to the best extent that we can because we those are controllable items, right? We can control the noise when it comes to the speaker box. We can control the lighting. We can control the screening when it comes to the landscaping. Those are all controllable that are, are available to us. And, and we, we take those principles and whether we're applying them at a different location or applying them here, uh, we, we feel that we can uh, certainly, certainly implement them. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Martin. Uh, I heard a couple of uh, comments about the uh, odors coming. Is the uh, exhaust from the restaurant filtered in any way? It is, yeah. So we have our uh, above the fryers and the grill. There's, there's, uh, they're separate. <coughs> so the hoods uh, and the vent fans that pull it up and it's filtered. Um, and again, those are checked regularly from the porter um, to make sure that they're in, in good service. And uh, I personally, when I drove up, I've never smelled anything. When I drive up, um, I've smelled them at other restaurants, but typically not, not ours with our filter system. Commissioner Willis. Thank you. Um, I need to say I am confused with what Windflower is. Um, I heard the word easement, and I've also heard the word private road. Uh, if it's an easement, there would be reciprocal obligations. But it's from one description I heard, um, if something happens to a light or something else on Windflower, the uh, subdivision has to pay for it. 
That sounds to me to be a private road. I am wondering, to your knowledge, is this a private road or is it a road with easements? And if there are easements, what are your rights and responsibilities pursuant to the easement? Yes, absolutely, and that's, that's a very good question, and that was brought up um, you know, uh, through the discussion. It is, it is indicated to be a private road. I, I do acknowledge that that's, that shows up within the plans you have, uh, but there's also um, ingress, egress rights that are granted over that, and, and that's what Terry and I were talking about. There's a uh, recorded uh, instrument that says, here's, here's the rights to, to be able to come in and out using uh, wildflower. And so we'll be able to provide those. And I'm sure within that document, I don't have it here with in front of me, but typically you're right. Within that document, it spells out responsibilities, roles and responsibilities of is there contribution to it. And I can tell you as of now, that those, those easement rights exist right now um, I, I, over that property. It just isn't developed. And so if the, if the subdivision, if they want to do anything, it's, they're more burdened to do it. If, if we move forward and we're able to do it, I'm sure there's a mechanism within that document that we'll provide that indicates um, uh, roles and responsibilities with that. Okay, but you- So it is a private drive, absolutely, yep. Okay, I'm thinking of further questions, but yep. I'll pass my time, thank you. Commissioner Griffiths. <coughs> I think along those same lines of questioning, this um, the site is zone B3, uh, uh, could you just, remind the public and the planning commission there's many uses allowed in b3 there are uh, terry i don't know if that's something that well i don't know if mr spence has in front right of you now. there's there's the difference is there's a number of allowable principal uses this is a special land use okay. but um there are a number of, of uses including the bank but i don't have i don't know if mr spence can read off um it is important to understand what is allowed and what is allowed by special use. And then I guess further along those lines, this is Southfield Road. It's, there's usually a transitional buffer between intent zoning and less intent zonings like residential. This particular development didn't seem to have that, that being the uh, multifamily development to the rear. And it's, if you look at the aerial, it's one of the first pages in the document. There's one building that's particularly close to Southfield Road versus the rest of the development, which just happens to be close to this, this culvert. So that seems like it was a little bit of a last minute building added in by the residential developers that now is facing the reality of there was gonna be something developed next to it, um, being such a prime piece of real estate. You know, this isn't a city park or public land or anything like that. So I just think it's, it's always important to remind um, everybody that this is a, a, you know, a lot that's zoned for development and just to remind us what's, what's available. Um, that, that's my main question, I guess. If yeah, if I, if I may through the chair, uh, the question with regard to both permitted and special uses within B3, uh, the permitted uses are as follows, uh, medical office building, including mobile medical trailers, banks and similar financial institutions, post office, private clubs and lodges, nursery schools, photographic studios and interior, uh, interior decorating studios, photographic reproduction, funeral homes, personal services, retail uses, veterinary clinics, publicly owned buildings, establishments of electricians, plumbers, etc., assembly halls, concert halls, religious institutions, similar places of assembly, open air retail, hotels, freestanding restaurants without drive-through, carry-out restaurants, those, uh, health and fitness clubs. So those are the permitted uses within the district. They would just go through just a site plan type review instead of the special use portion. Those requiring special land use include recreation centers like bowling alleys, uh, skating rinks, archery, dance studios, motor vehicle washing, gasoline stations, automobile repair and service, automobile and truck agency sales, open air display of motor homes, executive professional offices, motels, theaters, alternate financial services, pawn shops, smoking lounges, soup kitchens, cabaret, uh, medical marijuana facilities, small box retail, uh, kennels, pet daycare. So those are the special land uses. So as you can see, B3 encompasses a whole bunch of very different things 
between the permitted and the special land uses, but it does allow a whole wide range of uses on the property. So to maybe emphasize the other development, the Starbucks was a special use, but the other two or three restaurants, the Jets, those Arkins, those would have been just permitted because of the retail and restaurant nature? Correct. Okay. Just want to remind us. Commissioner Huntington? Uh, I understand there's going to be a fence added in also. Mm -hmm. What type of fencing do you have in mind? Sure. I, I think the detail is provided on the landscape plan, but it's, it's a, uh, I think, a three and a half to four foot aluminum decorative fence. Um, it's shown already along Southfield, and we would extend that along Wildflower as well. Along with the sidewalk, right? <laughs> yes, with the sidewalk. So I did, I did, let me take a look. It's four foot. It's a four foot uh, ornamental metal fence uh, that, that we've uh, indicated on there. Um, and then uh, we, we'd be able to add that sidewalk and then incorporate that, uh, the uh, fence right along with it. I think it'd be interesting to see the... Uh, traffic study, mm -hmm. uh, that's always a big issue anytime something's developed around Southfield Road, so that, that will be interesting. Hopefully we can work something out where the traffic can flow a little better and a little safer for the residents. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Bernudi? No further questions. Commissioner goodwin Die. I'm just going to reiterate that I think I spoke on this last week as well, that traffic is very bad in that area. Um, Commissioner Martin? I think one of the things that needs to be addressed is the traffic from Starbucks. If Starbucks is causing a problem that exists now, it's going to affect, it affects everyone in the area right now. So that is something that needs to be uh, rectified. The other thing I have a concern with is that there, was, there were issues with the hours of operation and the sounds coming from. I think city code allows uh, businesses to operate from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. during the week and to 11 and 12, 11 o'clock on Friday, Saturday night, Sunday night, so that they're within the, the 10 o'clock hours that they have seem to be within the city code. Uh, so that should be a benefit for the uh, noise abatement to uh, reduce the amount of noise because it's it's within the hours. That's all. Commissioner Willis. Thank you. I would like, um, if you could, somehow get me to understand what the rights and privileges of the subdivision would be, since they are the owner of the private road. Uh, so, any way you can get that to me. But my question, I think, goes to actually the sidewalk that was just mentioned. Um, it looks like the sidewalk is not shown on our documents. Uh, would, those, would that sidewalk reduce parking, to your knowledge? I think you have 47 spots, and you're having a sidewalk that would probably encroach into that uh, area. Right. So the city code requires that uh, five-foot sidewalk, one foot inside of the right-of-way. And so where, we, where you see where the color stops on the site plan that they have in front of you, that's where the property stops, so that a sidewalk would actually go on, uh, uh, outside of that. And so, it would not affect yeah, it. Yeah, and I actually worked on that today, and I was able to, to work that and get that configuration there. So I feel comfortable about that. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Commissioner Griffith? Um, we've heard a lot about Culver's operations. They're more cleanly than anybody else. But from... Uh, site plan point of view, Culver's goes out of business tomorrow, which is probably unlikely. What's, what goes with this site plan? You know, the next restaurant owner that comes in without his deeper pockets, do they have to pick up the trash or, you know, what, where, does that, where does that part of the agreement start and stop? Well, um, I could say in general terms that the special land use runs with the land, so any conditions that are put on for the special land use, whoever the new property owner would have to comply with that. We also require a site maintenance agreement to be recorded with the county. That's another enforcement tool for the property. Okay. And then, you know, codes department would be called initially 
and if things weren't taken care of, that's when our legal department would get involved and it might lead to the courts. But we do put those, um, being the fact that it's a special land use, those conditions run with the land until they're amended and the site maintenance agreement also runs with the land as far as maintenance. Commissioner Huntington? No further comments at this time. Commissioner Venuti, uh, you indicated that it would take uh, one, is it one every four minutes for the drive through? Was that for the drive through to indicate whatever That's they correct. were ordering? If I ordered eight hamburgers, it would only take you four minutes to do that so we wouldn't be holding up traffic? Yeah, so our, our goal for drive through is four minutes. Obviously, you know, a crispy chicken, for instance, may take a minute or two longer, but yeah, the, the goal is, is four minutes to from from order to delivery to the car um, is it within a four to five minute window and, and I think that's part of the reason why then you see the requirement of stacking so the city has the ordinance when it comes to how many vehicles are stacking so we do have that on there and one of the things that I, that I heard um, a little bit earlier was with uh, what's going on at Starbucks across the way where maybe they don't have enough stacking or there's some issues with their stacking and it's coming out under wildflower if you look at our configurations a little bit different it's actually we can contain another 10 to 15 vehicles let's say it just happens to be longer we could contain another 10 to 15 vehicles easily on our property uh, because of where our drive through is on the south side and it could stack up all throughout there so um, we could we could be totally self-contained so there's no car, uh, there's no place that a car could pull to the side while they were waiting for the order to try to help the traffic flow? We, we actually do have that. So on the east side, on the right side of the building, you'll see there's a number of uh, vehicles that are shown on there. Those are the city requirement stacking. Um, then on the, yes, right there you can see as Mr. Spencer shown. On the north side, those are the additional stacking spaces. So if, as, as Kurt had mentioned, hey, if it's a couple of crispy chickens and it's going to take a couple minutes longer, they can pull up, they wait. They're, they're, right, there's no delivery at the window, so it can be ran out to them. So beyond the number of stacking spaces that we have as part of the drive-through, we've also incorporated some holding spaces as well on the plan. Thank you. Commissioner Goodwin Dye? No further questions. Commissioner Martin? Nothing. Commissioner Willis? Nothing further, thank Commissioner you. Commissioner Griffith? Commissioner Huntington? Nothing further. Um, I uh, have heard all of the comments and I, I, I empathize, I em empathize with the homeowners and I, I think that the um, traffic study is going to be very revealing as to what proceeds. So with that, um, I'm going to ask Mr. Spence for his recommendation that we postpone to a date uncertain. Is that correct? That's correct. That okay. would be our recommendation subject to the traffic impact statement being completed okay. or study and that they meet with the homeowners association and try to mitigate some of the, the, the legitimate concerns that were raised. And then they'll coordinate with our office and we'll reschedule this at a, at a further date. Okay. Would I be out of order asking to understand the rights of the owner? That, that will be included as part of the traffic impact okay. statement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, commissioners, is there a motion to postpone the PSLU 22-0002 to a date, no date certain? To the chair, I'd like to make a motion that PSLU 22-0002 be postponed to no date certain for uh, review of the traffic stu traffic input study, uh, meet with the Homeowners, Homeowners Association and other uh, items that were discussed. Okay. And, and uh, Mr. Willis, were you the support? I support. Okay, okay. thank you. It's been moved and second. Uh, moved by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Willis, that we postpone to no day certain PSLU 22-0002. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries to postpone this proposal uh, to no day certain. M Madam Chair, if I may, if we could do the same thing with PSP 22-0005, um, that is the accompanying site plan review request that's part of this as well. 
Okay, is there a motion to postpone PSP 22-0005 to no date certain? I move to postpone PSP 22-0005 to no date certain. Second. I second that. Minuti? It's been moved by Commissioner Willis and second by Commissioner Benuti that we postpone PSP 22-0005 to no date certain. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries that we uh, postpone to no date certain PSP 22-0005. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, commissioners, I'd like to open the public hearing for PZR 22-0001. Uh, Mr. Spence. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the next item on your agenda is a rezoning and a site plan review request. Uh, this is PZR 22-0001, PSP 22-0006. Uh, this is the request of Kiwi Hospitality. Uh, for 26620 Franklin Road. We're on the east side of Franklin between Swanson and West 11 Mile Road. It's a property that's 1.41 acres. Uh, the property currently zoned B3 General Business. So the rezoning request is, is to rezone to OS Office Service. Um, the proposed site plan is for the conversion of the existing five-story hotel to an existing living and memory care facility. This is an aerial of the property uh, showing the area of the pr uh, proposed rezoning as well as the site plan. Uh, you've actually seen this project or a property, this property before uh, with the hotel portion that actually faces Telegraph Road. Uh, so this is the five-story hotel at the back of this property. <clears throat> Originally when this went through a site plan process, uh, it was to be flagged as a different uh, hotel from the Best Western. It was going to be a La Quinta. Uh, that has since uh, gone away and the proposal now, uh, as I had noted, is for an assisted living in a memory care facility. Existing conditions. This is what the, the building currently looks like. And again, as I had noted, the current zoning is B3 general business with the future land use uh, of the technology corridor along Telegraph Road. Uh, you'll note that there is a, a piece of property that's OS office service directly to the south of the portion of the property that is currently um, before you for rezoning. And the, the black uh, line that goes around this property includes the building itself and then toward Franklin Road and then the parking lot on the south side of the existing building. So again, 1.41 acres of land. This is the site plan for the proposal. Um, the existing five-story hotel and then the single-story addition off of the west side of the building. And with that, uh, as I noted, this is a public hearing for the rezoning portion. Uh, so you do need to hold a public hearing on that, the site plan, uh, then we will deal with after the rezoning. Is your petitioner here? I'm sorry? Your petitioner. Uh, yes, Mr. Dowling is here this evening, yes. Hello, thank you. My name is David Dowling, owner of Yukon Building and Land Development. We are here seeking rezoning change for <clears throat> an 85-bed senior assisted living memory care facility and site plan approvals. The zoning class presently is B3. We are requesting the zoning to be changed to B4, allowing, sorry, allowing assisted living and memory care facilities. The Franklin Senior Residence is located at 26620 Franklin Road, 48033. This existing five-story property was part of the Best Western Premier, a 206-room, 16-story tower located at 26555. Telegraph Road, finished and occupied 2017. Also put online on the property in 2020 was a two-story building, a 54-unit Best Western Executive Suites, now in operation. The last building on this property is the five-story, <clears throat> excuse me, 
It will be completely renovated into an 85-bed, single-room, senior living residence. The building will be refitted with new electrical plant, including a generator system that will run the entire building, a state requirement. The entire domestic water system will be new, sprinklers, HVAC systems also new. All the requirements necessary for state certified licensed facility will be in place. Most properties in the area are grandfathered and not state certified and don't require the same extent of electrical and mechanical requirements, alarm monitoring for secured locked facilities. The building will be 100% independent of all other properties on site. Each room is private with full handicap bath. All rooms will have independent heat, cool controls with alarm monitoring systems. The five-story building will be a newly constructed 5,000 square feet dining and kitchen facility equipped to provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for clients and staff. The main dining seats 75 guests. The kitchen and dining are are attached directly to the existing five-story building. There is also areas on each floor where if the client is more restricted, there's accommodations for eating and lounging. The exterior garden area will be open to the visiting guests for the clients, but it is a secured space, fenced restricting others from entering the property or clients unable to wander off. Notes from the operator. <clears throat> The kitchen will be staffed with a full-time chef, also a dietitian on board that works directly with the nursing staff to construct three family meals daily. Some clients require special dietary needs. These will be tailored to address those issues. The facility operates 24 hours a day. In most cases, our clients will, in the facility will be there until end of life. Between staff shifts, the operation will expect 55 full-time employees facility will operate completely self-contained. The building has a complete commercial laundry facility and will accommodate the general laundry as well as it's equipped for small loads to service the client's needs also. This operation will require a full-time cleaning and maintenance staff. This will, <clears throat> this will meet all state certified and licensed assisted living and memory care facilities with a licensed operator. The property will be owned by the same owner and operated by a local operator. Marty currently owns and operates the Chester Street residence local at Royal Oak in Royal Oak, Michigan. That'll be the operator for the, for the facility. At this time, I'd like to answer any questions you may have uh, concerning the property or the facility. Okay. I'd like to uh, find out if there's any community input. Any community input? Any community input? Uh, I, th I think you. Uh, I'm. I'm. I might have missed it. Did you officially open the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Given no community input, I'm going to close the public hearing. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Huntington. What type of uh, air purification system do you have in there? Do you have a more sophisticated one? And with the emergence of COVID, uh, I know a lot of assisted living homes are putting in the upgraded systems <clears throat> that will help kill germs in the air. Is that uh, anything you have in store? Well, I'm not, I'm not the mechanical engineer. I'd like to address your question. Um, I do know that the systems meet state requirements. I do know that the HPA system that's being put into the building requires a great deal more than would be a standard operating room facility. It has to maintain a temperature of no less than 72 degrees at any time. It also has makeup air within the hallways and circulated air. So there's two different um, facilities yeah. that, that operate it. Yeah, I understand the standard uh, system, but I was just wondering if you would put an updated air purification system in there. It's all brand new. The entire HVAC system, uh, HVAC system is new, and all of the in-room systems are new. Everything in the entire building is new. Okay, but it's a standard system. It's not an updated system for purifying the air. So they, they have to be state required. They, they have to be state of the art uh, systems. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'll be glad to give you whatever information you'd like from my mechanical engineer. I, I really don't, can't give you everything. I, I don't know that. If, if I may, through the chair, um, 
if we can keep our questions, and, and I appreciate the question, but if we could keep it to the item before us, which is the rezoning portion, if there are other questions with regard to site plan issues, we can bring that up under the site plan. But if we could focus on the rezoning right now, I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Just want to add one thing um, with regard to the rezoning. So we're dealing with an existing building, keep in mind, that's looking to go to a different zoning district. Um, sometimes that um, brings up some issues maybe with building height or setbacks, things like that. I just want you to know that while you see what appears to be a property line here, <clears throat> it's actually a condominium. So there's no property line established. So we don't have to worry about setbacks um, with regard to the zoning district in itself. Um, however, in the OS office service, the, the height requirement or the max is 25 feet. We're dealing with a, a building that's 50 feet. So just for your information, when we do look at rezoning uh, something that's currently existing, that we may come upon times in which we will need to require some kind of a waiver. In this case, there will be a waiver that would be required for building height. We can focus on that under the site plan, but I just wanted to bring that up to you that with this change of zoning proposed to OS, there is a requirement now for, for a waiver for building height. Okay. Commission, to the chair, so we're just yes. covering the rezoning now, not the site plan. Right. Correct. We're going to do them separately for now on. Or? That, that, that's correct. Um, so the merits of rezoning from B3 to OS, I believe. Mr. Spence, could you read the permitted and special land uses? Because even though the, the, the uh, applicant has one particular use in mind, again, once it's rezoned, all of those potential uses could come in there. So yeah, if I may, uh, through the chair to the commission with regard to uses permitted, uh, executive, administrative, professional offices, medical office, uh, medical, uh, mobile medical trailers, facilities for human care, such as hospitals, sanitariums, convalescent nursing home, banks and similar financial institutions, libraries and other government offices, private social and fraternal lodges, churches and other re related facilities, emergency shelters for homeless and soup kitchens, private and public schools and colleges for general vocational education, nursery schools, photographic studios, and interior uh, studios, funeral homes, personal services, veterinary clinics and hospitals. Those are the permitted uses. Under the special land uses, pharmacies and prescription centers, private and public athletic clubs and health spas, office and drafting supplies, reproduction and duplicating facilities, office warehousing when storage or warehousing of goods and products does not exceed 60% of the usable area, buildings in excess of two stories, automobile and truck leasing and rental offices, residential structures to or used for non-residential purposes, uses related to reasonably necessary and convenient for the satisfactory operation of a complete and integrated OS office service, self-storage facilities, and then any restaurant that had prior approval. So those are the special land uses. But again, we are dealing with a permitted use here uh, for a uh, hospital, hospital, sanitarium, um, convalescent home, et cetera. Commissioner Huntington? Oh, no, for the comments. Commissioner Griffey? I think from a site plan point of view, this is an interesting site because it has frontage on two streets. Uh, so this building technically can have its own front, which it looks like it's going to have. That makes sense. I think it physically touches another building, but it's legally and fire separated and all those things. So I think this is a, it's a good use for the building and it probably doesn't fit into a perfect box of what zoning it's supposed to be. And in, in essence, they're downgrading their zoning and like removing potential from from the property to fit this use, but the benefits of the use far away um, that in my mind, um, it just it's it's hard to not talk about the site plan when we know what it is. So I think it's it's a, it's a good use. It's it's interesting to do the condominium approach to it. Um, I have no opposition to the project at all. 
Commissioner Willis. I am comfortable. I think this crosses the T's and dots the I's. So, uh, good luck on it. Thank you. Commissioner Martin. You indicated that there was someone that was going to operate the facility? Yes, sir. He's in operation presently in Royal Oak. Uh, the name of his facility, you can look it up online. I can send you the information. That's not important. Uh, what I'm wondering is there's uh, what kind of percentage is there that he will take over the facility once he goes through the approval process, all the approval processes. We don't want him to make the change in zoning and then find out that it's not going to go, so it needs to be another zoning area. I understand. Um, we have full intentions to operate it this way. We're in a demo right now. So the change is necessary to be made. Yes, sir. Thank you. Commission Goodwin Dye, Commissioner Bernudi. Well, <clears throat> pardon me. Will all of the patients, will they be living in or will there be some that will be coming on a daily basis? Generally, all of them will be living there. Their, their family members come and visit. Um, but most of these folks are, are, are bedridden or, you know, able to move around, but not as, not as well as most. Uh, the amenities that you would have available for the people that are there, what would they be? Well, I mean, each, each unit is, is their stuff inside of it. Um, as far as all the amenities, each floor has an open area. It's actually, there's three rooms if we were to get to the center of uh, one of the floors, if we could do that. Right in the middle, there's three, three units that are broke out that, that incorporate seating. Um, let me see if we can get to it here. There you go. Okay, right where the main entrance is coming in, that area right there is all on all floors is seating areas. If we were to go up in another drawing, we'd find seating areas and, and lounging and other activity areas. As far as the operation side goes, uh, the general staffing do, they have, uh, it's, it's kind of a schedule. It was 9.30 breakfast, 10.30 uh, amenities that you're talking about, 12.30 lunch, 2.30 said so-and-so, 5.30 dinner. Um, I was reading through stuff. But like I said, that would be online with uh, Marty's operation. He's the individual that would be I, operating. I was thinking along the lines of like a beauty shop or a uh, library or uh, things that they, since they're living, this is their permanent home, are there other things for them to do other than eat and sleep? I would think so. I personally don't operate it, but I would think that there would be many different amenities that would be in involved in this particular facility. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art facility. It's not your basic nursing home. I mean, it's a very well-built, nicely done, brand new facility. I would think that they would have libraries and other activities for these folks. And, and you said that you would have meals three times a day and there's five floors, so would they all be going down to a main area? Um, some folks would be dining in the main dining area that seats the, 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 the general population. Uh, others on each floor, there is a, a hot plate area where they service people that, that can't get around as well, and they'll be serviced right on that floor. And if, if you were able to take a look at the prints on the inside, you would see that location on each floor. Okay. And will there be a, this is my last question, I promise. Uh, I notice you have back stairs on that building, uh, you know, that go all the way up to the, to the top. Will they be removed or, or is? No, they're required. Uh, both those stairways will remain. There will be an extra elevator added in the front okay. of the building here. And there's also an elevator to the rear side, which is there presently. Okay. So it'll be removed and replaced and, and refitted but the elevator in the front of the building is a larger elevator. If I could, um, th this is getting into the site plan mm -hmm. issues. Oh, and right. I'm just gonna ask the commission to just focus on, on the, the merits of the rezoning request before us. Okay. Um, that being said, we've been working together on and off for I think a decade. At least. And I don't know if this is the fifth or sixth iteration uh, but we got to look back at where we started from. We had the former Haldi Inn Hotel that was vacant for many, many years. Uh, we had a, a 
a large complex. We've gone through many iterations. Two thirds of it now is occupied. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously we would have liked to seen this five story developed at some point as a third brand, but market conditions have changed. We've had COVID, we've done some things with the reorientation of the entrance of the building and so forth. And um, it's still vacant. And so we're trying again to use our zoning to encourage redevelopment and adaptive reuse of this property, short of it being demolished and something else happening. Um, so I w again, there's a number of uses that you have to consider for the rezoning. Some of these specific questions we can go uh, under the site plan portion. But if you feel that the office service zoning is compatible with um, the larger development and the surrounding parcels, make your recommendation based on that. The only other thing I'd ask, Mr. Spence, is what is the total acreage of this OS request? 1.41 acres. Okay. So please make your decisions based on the uh, merits of the zone rezoning request, and then we'll get into the specifics on the site plan. Commissioners, are there any additional questions regarding the rezoning request of this proposal? Yes. Commissioner Martin. Do we no. require a waiver for the height? I believe Mr. Spence said the height requirement was 50 feet, and this was 100. Or well, is that included in the rezoning? No, that that would not be included in the rezoning. So that is an issue that will have to be addressed under site plan. Okay. Yeah, if I, if I may through the chair, I just wanted to bring up what happens when we do look at a rezoning of an existing building that sometimes you do have distance requirements, setbacks, things like that, that um, could come up as a result of it. That was the only that was the only reason for bringing it up. Commissioners, are there any additional questions regarding the rezoning request of this proposal? No. Given none, is there a motion? Oh, Commissioner uh, Griffiths. I, I just think it's important to acknowledge how expensive buildings are, and when you have a very large building that can be repurposed, we need to make. We need to be creative within our zoning rules, and this is a good example of how to do that. So it's not doesn't check every single box, but it, it's probably it's a, it's a good way to reuse, adaptively reuse. And there's a I heard an aging po population in Southfield, and there's always a need for different types of housing accommodations. This isn't necessarily one you choose, but it's one that's very necessary towards the end of life and as skills diminish. So I think that's an important thing to to strive for. Is there a motion? <clears throat> oh, I need to call for the recommendation. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Madam Chair. Uh, with regard to <clears throat> PZR 22-0001, uh, the request to rezone 1.41 acres of land from B3 General Business to OS Office Service, um, the Planning Department does make a favorable recommendation uh, for the following reasons, Southfield Comprehensive Master Plan indicates sec technology corridor subarea for this property. Change in zoning would be compatible with and similar to existing adjacent zonings and land uses, and the proposal is in accordance with the standards for rezoning of the property. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation? Yes. I make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Or it's been moved by Commissioner Benuti and second by Commissioner Martin that we accept the recommendation for uh, P to rezone PZR 22-0001. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion to rezone uh, is carried. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, now we can move to the site plan portion and just a few more comments from, from staff on that. Um, so again, uh, obviously you saw the site plan as, as part of uh, the presentation for the rezoning, uh, but just to reiterate, um, they are looking to uh, add an additional building. I believe that Mr. Dowling had noted um, the size of that building at 5,000 square feet, a single story uh, on the west side of the building. Um, there would also be an inclusion for some outdoor spaces uh, for outdoor, outdoor gathering, walking, 
um, meet with family. That is on the south side of the building. They've also reoriented the uh, um, entrance to the building to the south side. Uh, there is a canopy uh, as well as a, an area for drive up and drop off as well. Uh, this is the landscaping for the building. And then landscaping for the site. It does include uh, plant material, a hedge along Franklin Road, along the frontage for the, uh, for the parking spaces. Elevations of the building. Um, I know I showed an image earlier of, of the existing color scheme of the building. Uh, this is the proposal uh, with, with the, the color palette. First floor, we did uh, take a look at this briefly as part of the rezoning uh, with the brand new building on what would be the left side of, of the existing building. Second and third floors with the units. Fourth and fifth floor in those units. Uh, as Mr. Dowling had noted, uh, 85 total units within the building. Through and the chair. with that, if there's any additional comments. Yeah, in this particular case, now that we're at the site plan level, is there anybody representing the owner operator? Uh, Marty, is I he here? In. He's not here. Um, I'm going to recommend that we postpone to a date certain of one month so that the owner operator can come and ask, answer specific questions about the operation and some of the other issues that were raised on, on this building. That's fine. He couldn't make it tonight. So our recommendation is to postpone to a date certain. Mr. Spence, do you have the July date available? Uh, I believe that date would be July 27th. Let me confirm. That would be the next regular meeting date. <clears throat> yes, it would be. So we're looking at a postponement to July 27th regular meeting. Okay. Now, that before you actually make that motion, um, if there are any legitimate questions that you would like to ask the petitioner so he can be prepared to answer them next month, now would be the time. Commissioner Huntington, do you have any questions related to the site plan request? No further questions. Commissioner you, If I could, you, you would like some more information about the filtration system? Yes, I would. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Griffith. The... Uh, drop-off canopy at the front is that tall enough for a fire truck to fit under or does the fire truck go around it and it's short enough to drop off grandma it, you know, it needs to be a minimum of 13 and a half yeah. feet for emergency vehicles yeah and it, it could be looks like it could be shorter because it doesn't come across the drive I didn't know if they intended to drive around or or still drive under I'm sure it'd be tall enough for a truck to fly underneath it Okay. And, and a car to park underneath You'll confirm it. that? What's that? You'll confirm that? Yes, I will. I'm writing these notes down right now. Yeah. And I hate to even mention this, but I'm curious. Is That's the in door. There's an out door for your last trip out of the building by ambulance. or Is, is that through the front of the building? Or let's say you pass away. You know, does, Is there a, a, a back door? Well, there is. It's a good question. Um, the back door is in the kitchen area, back where it goes out, um, or the service area. But I think coming out of the building, the way down would be the elevator. Uh, Forgive me, you, I designed to, to get down from the fifth years. floor down to the first floor. Yeah, yeah un unfortunately, I've I've been involved with two family members that had to have passed away at a facility, and there was always a separate. Uh, entrance where um, the funeral director, mm -hmm. you know, took the body out. So we'd like that okay. answered as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll think of another one for you, but no, not right now. All right, Commissioner <laughs> Willis. It appears we're asking the questions we're going to ask. Um, I'm just concerned that it appears sterile. It's a sea of parking lot, and I just wonder if you have longer term plans to green it up or somehow to just make the area look less cold. So, and more out of curiosity than anything else. Um, Mr. Spence, there's an yeah. outdoor green space that's fenced in, right? Yes, there is. If so go back maybe to we can that go to that area right there. I saw, the, I saw the marks of green space, but do, even do, with Don't it. we have a colored version? I thought there was a... Yeah, there is. He'll get to it. Here, there, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, that whole space right there to the left side of the entrance is all gardened area. 
uh, on one of the landscape plans, it shows it pretty well detailed as far as how it's landscaped. It's also got a fence around it that keeps the client inside and keeps, keeps others from coming into the building. The building is a secured building. Okay, it, again, it, it's, I see a lot of parking, but I understand. Commissioner uh, Martin? No questions at this Maybe time. we could have a blow up of that for next time. Yeah, I'll be glad to. Okay. Commissioner Goodwin Dye? Nothing at this time. Commissioner Benuti? No further questions. Uh, I think uh, that this is a, uh, a good use for that facility. Um, I think that it also provides <clears throat> an opportunity for lots of jobs for our citizens, lots of jobs for our mm -hmm. citizens, given that it's a 24 hour operation. So I'm interested in, in hearing more about it. At this time, is there a um, motion to postpone to a date certain of July 27, 2022? I'd like to make a motion that PSP 22-0006 be postponed to a date certain of July 27 for Support. the issues. Commissioner Huntington. <clears throat> report. It's been moved by Commissioner Martin and second by Commissioner Huntington that we postpone uh, PSP 22-0006 to a date certain of July 27, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries to postpone to a date certain July 27, 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing for PZR0DD22-0002. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is a uh, rezoning request for an overlay development district. Uh, if you recall, uh, a month or so ago, um, you had approved uh, adding this particular property to the Northwestern Highway Overlay Development District Corridor and now the petitioners before the Planning Commission uh, for an actual project uh, on this particular site. Uh, petitioner is Friedman Real Estate, uh, property located 27400 Northwestern Highway on the north side of Northwestern Highway between Bell Road and Telegraph. Uh, current zoning of the property is B3 General Business, uh, and as I had noted, the proposal is to rezone the property to overlay development district with a development agreement with underlying B3 for a mixed use development. It's a little closer view of the property itself. Again, it does have an existing multiple story building already on it, uh, and then three areas of, of parking, uh, both to the west, to the east, and then to the north. Existing zoning regional mixed use for the future land use, and existing condition for the building uh, from an aerial. Uh, this is the existing building, again, um, for existing condition. And then this is the proposed development. Uh, again, the existing building would be used as a self-storage facility. Uh, it would have entrances, and again, it would be on the inside. Uh, so you would have a, an entry uh, on the west side of the building, entry exit, entry exit on the east side of the building. So you'd actually be able to drive straight through uh, from one side to the other to access uh, the various storage units that would be on multiple floors. Uh, also included uh, is a second phase, uh, which would be for an assisted living facility. That would be to the right or on the east side of the existing building. And then on the opposite side, on the west side, would be a small medical office building with a drive through pharmacy. That would be th phase three. The landscape plan for the property uh, does add some uh, needed additional landscape on the site, uh, including the screening landscape along the parking areas. F storage facility floor plan. Uh, so you have the first floor plan, which is on the top and then the uh, other floors above it and what the storage layout would look like. Uh, if you recall, um, the petitioner at the last meeting had noted um, that this building was built in a way that it could support storage facilities or, or storage units. 
um, just how it was constructed way back when. Uh, so again, this is the floor plan for how the, the layout of, of the units would be on each of the floors. Elevations of the building. The assisted living facility. So these are the, the floor plans for the assist, assisted living. And again, it's multiple stories as well. And their elevations. And then the medical office building and its floor plan. And then its elevations as well. And then a rendering of, uh, of the proposal. And then one of the options is in lieu of uh, the assisted living facility, there would be an additional uh, office structure uh, instead of the assisted living. Um, with that, the petitioner is here this evening. Um, uh, Mr. Warren Hudson, uh, representing Friedman. Good evening. Uh, thank you for hearing our case this evening. I know we've talked, I think, ad nauseum with all of you about the need to adaptively reuse some of these excess office buildings in the city. We look at this property as a great opportunity to take a building that has sort of a unique uh, structure in that the depths and widths worth work perfectly well for this conversion um, and then add some amenities on the site uh, that would be helpful for the community as well. So. I think we've gone through some of the needs and, and uh, challenges with office leasing in the past, but I'm happy to uh, answer any questions you have in general in those terms or specifically with this property or this proposal in front of you. We also have our architect here uh, this evening as well. Pierre? Yes, um, so I, I was in support of extending the overlay development district to provide opportunity for adaptive reuse of this, this parcel. Uh, with the intent that it be mixed use. Uh, so can you, Warren, talk a little bit about the phasing? I mean, at one yeah. point, um, maybe I misheard, but uh, even though the majority of the building was going to be storage, uh, my understanding was that possibly part of the first floor could be some other use. I know your, your, your intent in phase two and three is to build uh, additional other uses, but um, for me to support this, I, I need to have a comfort level that either the main building is going to have mixed uses in it or the timing and the phasing of those outbuildings are done uh, approximately at the same time that the building's being converted to storage. Sure. So I think we had some preliminary discussions about potentially having mixed use uh, within the main building. And I'm going to grab Kat too to talk a little bit about that, but I think the our partner right now that we're working with on developing the self-storage um, had laid this out. This was the best use for them. Uh, so I think the, the preference is to keep the uh, main office building storage and then do the phases for the mixed use uh, separately. Uh, but that's certainly something that we can talk about with them. If, if that would be a requirement of the, uh, of the commission, we can certainly bring that back. Well, I, I, we have another applicant here who has a mixed use um, ODD mm -hmm. storage, but it also includes uh, a retail office that supports the storage unit. Um, it, it includes, I believe, a caretaker apartment that we've seen in some of these and some other retail uses. Um, even if it's a, you know, a smaller um, portion of the first floor, I think I'd be more comfortable knowing that those other uses were incorporated into this. That's not just 100% storage. Sure. And then, you know, and then the timing and phasing of your outbuildings, I think, is important. So we can certainly commit to the, the operations staff in the office, and I think a small retail component uh, will be part of the self-storage building for sure. Kat, do we have any other mixed use on the first floor? I don't think so. I can. Definitely commit that the office staff and there'd be a you know, small retail operation as part of this building. Um, if, if the objective is to see other mixed use within the building itself, uh, that's something we'd have to discuss with our partner. And, and yeah, I, I, I think, again, um, I'm, I'm supportive of adaptive reuse and trying to bring some life back in this building. We certainly don't want it torn down. Um, when we talked about the possibility of this, Again, uh, my understanding would be that at least some portion of the first floor would have some of these other uses. 
and that you would round out the rest of the property with some outbuildings. Sure. So um, again, we have a public hearing. I want you to hear uh, the questions from the commission. I don't think we're quite ready to move this forward tonight without addressing those other issues. No, that's perfect. I'd be um, happy to take any questions that we okay. have and then if we can table. I just, I just wanted to establish that up front and, um, and then you can hear the questions from the commission and then we can postpone this to a date certain of one month to give you time to um, respond to some of my concerns. Perfect. Thank you. Is there any community input? Any community input? Given none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Commissioner Benuti. No questions at this Commissioner time. Commissioner Goodwin Dye. No questions. Commissioner Martin. Am I correct in assuming that with the storage facility, you will have some place within the building to sell storage supplies, boxes, tape, that kind of thing? Correct. So, in, the, in an office as well. So that, that is a. Separate. Well, that that will help, but they need to show that yeah, on exactly. on the floor yeah, plan. So, so um, just to be clear, the in addition to the office for the storage facility itself, you're really looking for additional uses within that building. Well, if I could, ideally yes, mm -hmm. okay. but if if nothing else, if there's a small retail component where people can buy boxes, tape, yeah, packaging okay. materials, and that's staffed, uh, if there's an operator that has an office there and possibly in many of these there's a caretaker that lives there okay. if you could show those uses as part of this floor plan then it would meet the intent of mixed use plus your outbuildings if you can give us a schedule on the phasing of those okay. that will help the argument of why we would support this okay commissioner martin that that was the intent of my question perfect thank you, thank you. Commissioner Willis. Thank you. The renderings look as if all three buildings are level. Uh, when you look at the properties, the building to the left is higher by a few feet than the middle building, and the, the parking lot next to it is lower. I'm going to assume you're going to keep the uh, steps there? Yeah, I th the rendering is conceptual. I think ultimately the site work and, and the exact location of those buildings may dictate some earth moving, but yes, I, there is quite a grade change from as you move from the east of the site to the west of the site. So yes, I think our rendering probably should show a little bit more of a grade change there. Okay. okay. Commissioner Griffith? How, how many square feet roughly per floor is the storage building? Uh, it's a hundred and... About 32,000 per floor. Okay. And I think I agree, I mean, obviously with what Terry said, I like the idea of the mixed use part of the site, but just a, a large standalone storage facility with seas of parking around it doesn't seem to get to the intent of what we're, what we're going for. But I understand too, you have to free up the required parking by changing the use of the building. So we all want this to be a mixed use development for the overlay to make sense. Or, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. Commissioner Huntington. I have no questions on the rezoning. So it's only for work here. Okay. Commissioner Benuti. No zoning question. Commissioner Goodwin Dye. No question. Commissioner Martin. I have, I'm confused on the phases. The larger part of the parking lot where you have the building in with the white, mm -hmm. that is phase three or phase two? So I believe we labeled the that is phase three. So phase one is the original building, phase two is west, phase three is east. And, and I think those are a little bit arbitrary in terms of numbers. It may be that phase three comes immediately after phase one. I don't know that we've dictated the order in which they get developed. They're just a label. I'm uh, terribly sorry, I thought this thing was on uh, Okay, let me go. You're saying the medical building is on the, which side of the building? We is propose the, 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 yeah, we propose the medical building on the west and the assisted living on the east. Okay, all right, so. That, that's all at the time. Thank Commissioner. You. I'm good, thank you. Commissioner Griffith. Commissioner Huntington. All set. Uh, no question. Yeah, just to, uh, again, Warren, um, 
we, we've seen a lot of need for medical office. Mm -hmm. But do you have any um, studies regarding the need for the assisted living? I mean, in general, as Mr. Griffiths has stated, we are uh, an aging community. We have higher than average uh, um, older adults in our community. So there is a need, but I always ask, what is the threshold of that need and what is the marketing um, study that says that there's there's a need for additional assisted living so if you could either respond tonight or be prepared to respond next month oh, we'd be happy to bring a study with us next okay month. thank you mm -hmm. is there no additional questions Commissioner Martin I just wanted to make a motion that we uh, postpone to a date certain PZR zero DD 22-002 to a date certain uh, being July 27. Is that correct, Jeff? Is that correct, Jeff? Okay. Yeah. Support. It's been moved by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Willis that we postpone uh, PZR 0 DD 22-0002 to a date certain of July 27, 2022. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next one, we're going to open the public hearing for PZR 0 DD 22 0003. Um, yes, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, this is uh, an existing overlay development district um, for easy uh, Southfield, easy storage uh, on Southfield Road. And uh, if you recall at the meeting that we had earlier this month, now the petitioner is looking to amend the existing easy storage overlay development district uh, agreement in order to allow for uh, a beauty salon as a permitted use. Uh, when this uh, particular agreement was, was put into play and uh, approved by city council and ultimately uh, was recorded with the county, um, the ODD agreement stated that beauty salon uses were prohibited uses. Uh, so again, the, what the petitioner is seeking this evening uh, is to amend that document to actually allow beauty salons now. Uh, if you recall, the operator uh, of the salon was before the Planning Commission uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, explaining her business, uh, exactly what she does, and um, with that, um, I'll continue on. Uh, this, again, this is the existing site, so the building is currently there with its parking layout. <coughs> existing zoning uh, is uh, OS office service with easy storage ODD. Future land use is the north south field sub area. And this is what the building currently looks like. Uh, the unit in question would be on the far left uh, of the existing building. Uh, so that is where the proposed salon would go. And then this is the kind of the layout for the existing building and it's color coded to kind of give you an indication of the various uses, uh, the retail space, the salon space, the storage area, uh, as well as the office area. Uh, and then the color coding on the parking spaces uh, actually indicates what parking spaces or for which uses. Uh, there's more than enough spaces on this property to accommodate all the existing uses plus the salon use. Uh, plus there are actually uh, about five or six additional spaces available on site. This is the tenant floor plan for the salon. And with that, um, Mr. Bill Bowman is here this evening. Um, and uh, if we can give him an opportunity to state his case good evening uh, thank you for having us back again uh, do I need my address and I'll mm -hmm. that for the record please uh, 7211 Ulrich Dexter Michigan uh, again last week last two weeks ago we were here and Niani Barrett was with me explaining to her operations and I, I mean I think you were always impressed as I we have been with with her uh, with her business and I think she did a good job of explaining kind of what's happening in the salon business and how it's kind of evolved from a assembly line type thing to a much more personalized business. 
uh, and really how we got here, I think, and we kind of talked about what was the reasoning behind prohibiting beauty salons at that time. And I believe it was kind of, I don't think any, the main thing was we had 2,700 square feet of retail and I don't, and I think the main thing was that they didn't want to have that at salon as a major use, you know, the major use in our property. And I don't think we'd have the parking anyways, based on the parking requirements. But uh, as re we found a great tenant in Moneyball, and they took, they couldn't take the entire 2,700 square feet, and we really wanted to have them in the building. So we ended up with this, a, a little bit, it's kind of an awkward space, but a little over 900 square feet with a lot of parking. So it's kind of an unusual situation, but it fits the, uh, it's a perfect fit for uh, the use where there's a high requirement for parking uh, for a small space and it allows uh, a really strong young business to uh, expand in your city. Okay. And that's why we're back asking to amend the agreement. Is there any community input? Any community input? Given that, I'm going to close the public hearing. I don't have any further comment. I'm in favor of this. Okay. Commissioner Bernuti. No further comment from what we, uh, we talked about the last time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner goodwin die. Okay, I'm new, so I have a question. Um, going back to the previous, if we change this, I'll give it um, special consideration. Will this also follow with the next occupant? Yes, any, um, any amendment to the ODD agreement would run with the land. Okay, so that would open it up to a traditional beauty shop and having um, the opportunity to, or will it have specific? Um, what, what, what you're doing is amending the allowable or principal uses to include a, a beauty salon. Now this is a salon suite retail. Right. So we could write, um, we could write some more specific language on the type of salon and limit it to the square footage that it currently it is proposed to operate yeah. in. Uh, and that would, that covenant would run with um, the land. Yeah. So there are some protections that we can um, put into the ODD agreement to say it's no more than how many square feet? It's like 900, I'd say if you said 1,000 square feet. 1,000 square feet and right. it's operated as a salon suite type. Um, I'm, I'm sure we could make that uh, adjustment in the agreement. Yeah, okay. yeah and, it's a, and, and really, quite frankly, just I don't think if we wanted to, just based on the parking requirements, I mean, right now with just the 930 square feet, it's 20 cars. So I think we could maybe expand that by maybe another 100 or 200 square feet and still have the parking. I, so I, I think it's the parking requirements kind of take care of it, but I don't have a problem if you want to limit it to the, to the spay at all. No. Commissioner Martin. I'm sorry. The, right now, if I understand correctly, the zoning just does not include the salon. The that, overlay development agreement overlay the, yeah. does not uh, permit salons in, on this particular site. But the retail store that's part in Those, the retail okay. operations right. are permitted. Yeah. No questions at this time, thank you. Commissioner Willis. Uh, just probably an express concern. We're looking at 900 and some odd square feet of this suite. Um, she would then have to go through this entire process if she added 100 square feet. Am I correct? She would have to go through the whole. Well, uh, we're gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna look at this, but we'll cap it at a thousand square feet. Again, if you wanted to go twelve hundred square then feet, then they have to come back and amend the agreement. And it would, you know, and honestly, that wouldn't be if if there was a good reason and we could show that we had the parking. I don't. I I mean, I wouldn't have a problem coming back and and doing that. The parking will limit the yeah, size the of, of of it, but um, we can we can put that parameter in there that it's capped at a thousand square feet. Fair enough. Commissioner Griffiths? That, that's the part that bothers me because the parking requirements aren't based on square footage. They're based on use. Chairs and employees. 
So I don't think it's, you could have a larger space around your chair and shouldn't be penalized or the building owner shouldn't be penalized by not being able to lease, you know, a 2,000 square foot salon that they're going to put the same amount of chairs into. So I don't, I don't know how you word that. We'll, that's why I said we'll, we'll vet it out um, based on based but on the requirements. I am completely in favor of this little small retail mixed use portion of this building. <laughs> seems very appropriate facing Southfield Road. Um, seems less appropriate in a giant parking lot on a service drive for some mm -hmm. reason. But this is, I think, what you're going for with a mixed use building that's primarily storage. That's all. Commissioner Huntington? Yeah, I was really kind of expecting to see a rendering of what this building would look like. But uh, we definitely need some language added into this because most beauty shops would be too intense for this smaller space, I believe. Uh, beauty shops can really get intense at times. That's the, but that's the, uh, the floor plan. It's going to have, I think there's four, four major chairs. There's then your washing stations and your uh, drying stations. Yeah, and I see the floor plan, but uh, the overall look of the once it's done. So I was kind of looking to see. Through the chair, do you, Bill, do you have any interior renderings? We don't have. They have okay, maybe, have maybe adding some color on, on the floor plan would help. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's operating in another location, correct? Pardon? She's operating in another yeah, location. Yeah, she's got a single suite at the Burlington. Okay, Co maybe, yeah. maybe you can take some photos of that. Yeah. But this, this beauty shop here, this salon fits in well. The business, everything fits in well with this space and what she's doing. But right. if she ever leaves, and another beauty shop comes in, traditional beauty shop, and then it could be a, a problem if we don't get the range right. But well, yeah, and it would, it, and that's fine because we, because it, it, it's all going to be based on parking. chair, chair. I mean, and we've got to have the parking. We have the parking, and and there's only so many people you can fit in a space. Anyway, yeah, squeeze them in there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Benuti. No question. Commissioner Goodwin Dye. No question. Commissioner Martin. No question. Commissioner Willer. No question. Commissioner Griffith. No. Commissioner Huntington. No. I think it's a good idea. I think that uh, with the uh, amend the amendment uh, to the plan is going to be is going to be, and I'm looking forward to her moving down the street. Right. Um, is there a motion? To if, if, oh, if I'm I may through the, the chair, the, yep, for the plan of recommendation. recommendation. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> uh, with regard to PZR ODD 22-0003, uh, the planning department does recommend favorable consideration to amend the current e easy storage ODD master development plan and agreement for the 2.0 acre parcel with underlying OS office service and to allow for beauty salon use as a permitted use for the following reasons. Amendments include removing, removing beauty salons from the list of prohibited uses and allow them as a permitted use. Proposal would be consistent with the surrounding zoning classifications and is in accordance with Southfield Comprehensive Master Plan that indicates North Southfield sub area for this parcel. Uh, the proposal utilizing ODD, OD Overlay Development District provisions with underlying OS. Uh, office service zoning will allow the petitioner to fill the tenant space with a salon use. Amendment will not have adverse effects upon any of the adjoining zonings or land uses, and the petitioner is to work with the planning department and city attorney to finalize the overlay development district development agreement. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation? Commissioner Bernoulli? I'm sorry? Okay, is there a second? It's not on. It wasn't on. Second. Support. It's been moved by Commissioner Bernoulli and second by Commissioner Willis that we accept <coughs> the recommendation for PZR 0DD 22-0003. All in favor? Question. Yes. Are we capping this at the 925 square feet? Well, as Mr. Griffiths had pointed out, we'll we'll cap it on on the number of chairs in the parking. Right. Okay. So that makes that makes sense. Yeah. The, we'll, yeah, we'll, the, chair, we'll, the parking we'll, and chairs. We'll flush sense. out the yeah. specific amendment to the language. Yep. 
prior prior to right. going to council. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, that makes we, we went from nine twenty five to twelve hundred. So I thank you. The motion on the floor is by uh, Commissioner Bernudi and commission second by Commissioner Willis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries to uh, for uh, to accept the recommendation for PZ R zero DD twenty two dash zero zero three. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okie dokie. I'd like to open the public hearing for PZ TA twenty two dash zero 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 two. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is a text amendment. Uh, we've actually discussed a couple of times uh, with the Planning Commission. Uh, this is a, for a mixed-use corridor district uh, to permit moderate density, multiple family residential uses and small-scale commercial. Um, we would be looking at this along major thoroughfares such as West 10 Mile, West 12 Mile from Greenfield to Evergreen, and the intersection of 9 Mile and Losser. Uh, underlying zonings do vary. Uh, the intent uh, of this text amendment is to authorize the use of mixed-use corridor district regulations for the purposes of encouraging the use of land in accordance with its character and adaptability, act as a buffer between adjoining non-residential residential areas, to ensure new development is compatible in use, scale, and design, and encourages land use planning, providing housing, employment, walkability, traffic circulation, and recreational opportunities. Uh, as I had noted, we do or we are looking at um, various areas along uh, some of our mile roads. Uh, the area in yellow indicates um, those uh, particular properties that, that would be eligible for MUCD. On 10 mile road, those particular areas as well. And then at the corner of Nine Mile Road and, and Losser Road. Uh, we do have a few examples of uh, these mixed use type developments throughout, throughout our area. Uh, this is Northville, um, and we actually have two examples here. This is a mixed use building, two stories. You can see close to the building with basically zero lot line. This is an attached residential townhouses. Again, it's right on the street. I, and I, I want to point out, I know this is downtown Northville, but those condominium units are going for $1.1 to $1.3 million each. And so let's, we don't want to get confused with multifamily and um, high density that it necessarily equates to lower income because if it's done right and if it's in the good location, they can be, um, they can be uh, a nice development. Uh, in Wixom, this area is, is along Pontiac Trail and we are just east of Wixom Road. Uh, so this is a mixed use development <coughs> with uh, restaurants and office uh, as well. There, with this particular one, there's a lot of outdoor space uh, for gathering. Uh, and you can see not only across the frontage, uh, but also there are some areas on the side of the building that do provide for opportunities for outdoor dining. And then in Wald Lake, uh, there's some live work units that have been constructed up there. Um, these are first floor uh, office type uses, generally small office uh, with residential above. Uh, generally, you can see at the, the bottom right-hand corner image that the entranceways to the residential units are actually inset from the, uh, from the sidewalk area. Uh, that does at least provide some opportunity for, for gathering space on a porch of some kind. And with that, um, again, one of the reasons why we were looking at this um, particular uh, tool in our toolbox, so to speak. Again, it is, it's very similar to our ODD, similar to our RUDD uh, that we already have in our uh, zoning ordinance. It just provides an opportunity for a lot of these really shallow lots uh, with obsolete buildings 
uh, for just an opportunity for, for reuse and mixed use development, um, not only along the, the corridors of those uh, mile roads, but also provides opportunities for um, some of the people within some of those neighborhoods to have some kind of a, a retail uh, or some other service type use closer to home. And with that, um, we do have a public hearing on this. Is there any community input? Any community input? Given none, the public hearing is closed. Yeah, I, I'm, um, I'm really excited about the potential that this will afford for adaptive reuse or redevelopment of these shallow depth lots, uh, especially in the, um, the areas of the western, or excuse me, eastern part of the city where there's a higher concentration of Orthodox Jewish community that is more walkable. There's a high demand for residential living in a, a more dense, compact use. Uh, we spent a lot of time, the planning team, driving around looking at other similar types of developments in other communities. The size of the lot will dictate the density and overall parking. We don't want to limit uh, this to conventional setbacks. Each um, development put, uh, will, have it, will be reviewed on its own potential. But we, we feel that if, if we can get a couple, a couple of these established, uh, we can start uh, repurposing, repopulating, and densifying these corridors that have vacant office building or underutilized office building that are antiquated, that are unlikely to be anything than uh, multiple requests to turn them into storage units. So this will activate the streets. Um, this will provide additional residential and, and potential for small businesses to occupy the first floors. We're also seeing a, a, a trend where um, people who have been working at home in smaller independent businesses would like to get out of their house, even if it's a couple days a week, and are starting to rent or lease single unit office spaces. So I, I, I think the timing would be um, critical for us to, as Mr. Spence says, just create another um, tool in our toolbox as an option. This is only making certain areas eligible and then each individual property owner would have to come through a similar type of uh, rezoning that we've heard tonight with the overlay development district as well as our residential unit development districts. We have uh, limited uh, some of the corridors to more of the high impact areas first. And if we start seeing some success with these corridors, then we can um, consider expanding other eligible areas in the city but we feel that these are the areas that have the greatest potential for immediate results. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Bernuti. I'm excited about this. <laughs> and I, I was just looking at this. I have no, no questions at this time, but this is really thinking outside the box. Thank you. Commissioner goodwin Dye. I think it's a great idea. Um, but my question is, will there be like a ratio of how many stores, offices, and uh, multi-family multi uh, units available in this corridor? We, we're not limiting any type of percentage because in, in some cases it could be strictly all residential. In other cases it could be retail on the first floor, office above, or retail on the first floor and residential above, or it could be any combination thereof. Each development will um, be dictated on the size of the lot and being able to meet the parking needs. Um, we've had uh, a developer approach us for a lot on 10 Mile that had an office building burnt down. None of our conventional residential zoning districts work for high, higher density either um, stacked apartments or townhomes. Uh, so that's one particular case that um, if this gets adopted, I'm, I'm sure we'll have an application in soon thereafter for higher density residential. And I think we'll, we'll take each um, development on, on a case by case basis. We don't wanna, at, at one point I was thinking about a five foot setback. Uh, in some cases, some of these buildings are only a few feet set back off the road for a stoop or for a little garden area, but 
each one will be individual and we can we can review and make recommendations based on the, the development that is set forth. I do believe we have somewhere in a three to five story height range, but that also will be dictated about how much depth there are. There are, there are some lots that are deeper than others that m could accommodate a five story building. But we don't want to put too many restrictions on this. If they can meet the, um, meet the parking needs and, and provide other amenities for the tenants, residents, or owners, then we want to be flexible enough uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Martin? No questions at this time. Commissioner Willis? These property owners are going to be relatively close, and so I'm sure there's going to be mutual things they need, trash pickup, or something that requires some mutuality. Are you looking at kind of deed restrictions so that they would cooperate with each other, or do you look at you know, some type of common area maintenance agreements or something like that? Well, again, on a, on a case by case basis, um, depending on the types of uses, if it's, if it's a apartment complex that's managed by a particular um, management company, or it could be a condominiums that would establish a homeowners association that would take care of the trash and the, and the maintenance, it'll, it'll really be on a case by case basis. Okay, okay. Commissioner Griffith. Um, I think this is particularly interesting to me because as I run an architecture business, a construction business, and I live in a different place, I have to basically have three different buildings on three different sites, potentially in different cities. Um, so I'd, I'd love to have all the, uh, the businesses under one roof or multiple roofs near each other. And this gives the flexibility um, for that. And it, I think it's going to be, it's going to take time. It's going to, somebody's got to go first. Maybe I go second or third. I don't know. But it does, it does, uh, you know, present the possibility and the flexibility. I think you're going to you see a combination of a building and a site next to it, or you tear down part of this building and build this new function to get maybe a retail on the first floor. It, it's going to be really interesting how it evolves. And it's not going to be every single building isn't going to go to mixed use or all the residential. You know, some of these office buildings are going to continue for 50 more years, probably. But it's it's a good tool for a city that doesn't have a mixed use creative space for people to uh, to go. So I'm particularly excited about it. I do this other this design work in other cities. Um, it's what I try to specialize in as my company, and I can't point to an example in my location where my business is located. So I would love to be able to, you know, do, bring this closer to home, I guess. And it's, it's an exciting possibility. And it's a flexibility and, and, you know, everybody has to bring the project back to the Planning Commission. That's the good thing. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a blank check or, a, you know, a rubber stamp. It's, it's just presenting an opportunity so we don't, you know, the world doesn't pass us by. Um, I'm excited about it. Commissioner Huntington? 10 Mile Road does have a lot of obsolete buildings and old office buildings that no uniformity at all. You know, something like the MUCD would totally change the face of Southfield and put us on a whole different playing field, I think. I think this would be a really, really exciting uh, opportunity for the city of Southfield if it's accessible. Thank you. Commissioner Benuti? I agree with you. <clears throat> I, I was just thinking about uh, Attorney Figer and how much he has improved 10 mile on that side, you know, yeah. on uh, the north side. And that would be a great, great place. I like the idea that you also are concerned about the parking <clears throat> because in Royal Oak, they have all kinds of buildings, but they're so tight and they're, the parking is just, you know, it's not there. So I, I'm excited about the idea. Commissioner Goodwin Dye. <laughs> um, will, will the buildings be butted up together or yeah, will there be any spaces in between? Again, it's going to be on a, on a site by site okay. development. Commissioner Marsh? I think it's a good idea. No question. I think it's a good idea. Commissioner Griffith? Commissioner Huntington? 
Yep, Are there any further questions from the commission? No. I think it's a wonderful idea, and as soon as you get one, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there a uh, recommendation? Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> so there is a planner's recommendation uh, with regard to, <clears throat> excuse me, PZTA 22-0002. Uh, the planning department does make a favorable recommendation uh, for the draft dated June 22nd, 2022 for the following reasons. Proposed text amendment will amend Title V Zoning and Planning, Chapter 45 Zoning of the Code of the City of Southfield by adding a new section 5.22-3-2 Mixed Use Corridor District, MUCD, to the Zoning Ordinance to allow for properties eligible for MUCD to be developed under more flexible standards and any other amendments that may be necessary as needed for the above in the City of Southfield. The intent of this district is to authorize the use of mixed use corridor district regulations for the purposes of encouraging use of land in accordance with its character and adaptability, to act as a buffer between adjoining non-residential residential areas, to assure new development is compatible in use, scale, and design with the transitional function of the district, permit moderate density, multiple family, middle housing, residential uses, along with small-scale commercial uses and mixed-use development that will primarily serve the day-to-day -day needs of the residents, nearby neighborhoods, and residential complexes. It encourages innovation in land use planning, providing enhanced housing, employment, walkability, traffic circulation, and recreational opportunities for the residents of Southfield, ensuring compatibility of design and use between neighboring properties and encouraging development that is consistent with sustainable Southfield. Thank you. Is there a motion? Sure. Commissioner Griffiths, is there a I'd like to make a favorable motion for PZTA 22-0002. Okay. Support. Huntington? Yeah. It's been moved by Commissioner Griffiths and second by Commissioner Huntington that we accept the favorable recommendation of PZTA 22-0002. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. To the chair? Yes. I'd like to suggest that the north-south street names be indicated on the, the uh, diagrams for presentation to the council. All right, we're moving on to approval of minutes. Uh, Chair, I have um, minutes of May 11th and May uh, 20th. Um, Fifth before me, I think there was some discussion about the accuracy of uh, a comment or two that needed to be corrected, uh, and I believe that has been done. Motion to approve the minutes of the May 11th, 2022 study meeting and the May 25th regular meeting. Okay, uh, is there a second? I second that. It's been moved by Commissioner Martin and second by Commissioner Bernuti that we accept uh, the approval of a minute from the May 11, 2022 study meeting and the May 25th, 2022 regular meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries to approve the minutes. Uh, next, we have public comment. Is there any public comment? Public comment? That given there's no public comment, we're going to move on to miscellaneous. Uh, I have nothing at this time unless uh, City Planner Crow does. Yeah, um, two things. Uh, I know I recommended um, postponement on a couple items tonight. We do our best to be redevelopment ready and accommodate uh, applicants. We know time is money, but in some cases they're rushed um, when they submit. They don't provide us with all the information that we want. And especially after public hearings, we discover things that we may not have been aware of. So for those reasons, that's why in a couple of particular cases, I, I recommend that we take a pause to get more information before we move forward. We do everything we can as a planning team to keep development going. And if they meet a certain deadline for getting their applications in, we try to accommodate them. But they're not always ready. And um, that's where I was coming from tonight. The second thing, um, 
I wanted to follow up on Maple Tree with the, the whole sidewalk issue. After, uh, after the Planning Commission meeting, um, we did some research and found that the original site plan that was approved, I believe, in 1975 included the sidewalk on Matrot. And they went to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a waiver. And the ZBA gave them a temporary waiver saying, under the, the conditions of the fact that Matrot was a dead end road and was unpaved and there was no development across the street, they gave them a temporary waiver. But the condition of that temporary waiver was that a bond be established or some other um, letter of credit um, acceptable to the city attorney's office be drafted and a covenant be recorded that at some future time when the city determined, determined it feasible, a sidewalk shall be constructed. Since that time, Matron has been paved and there's been a substantial development um, built housing development across the street. Um, again, I, I was a little disappointed with the commission on not following our, our regulations. We're required, we all took an oath to uphold the regulations of the zoning ordinance, which today requires a sidewalk adjacent to any development and a connect, connection to. I've brought this forward to council the other night um, drop the requirement of having the connection through the fence if the sidewalk is constructed per the ZBA. And, and now the, the, the council uh, has moved the, the project forward with the condition that this goes back to the ZBA for interpretation on whether or not that sidewalk shall be required. But um, I, I, I wanted to give you some follow-up on on the recommendations that you made from last month and um, remind you of what our requirements are that we meet the regulations of the ordinance or that the applicant seek a waiver and but in this particular case that waiver was granted as a temporary waiver almost 40 years ago and sometimes kicking the can down the road puts us in a difficult situation today yes it's a burden financially um, for him to be able to construct the whole sidewalk um, but we're not supposed to look at financial burdens as a reason, the ZBA, for granting waivers. And he, he uh, made a comment that he's an attorney. And um, I would be very surprised when they took over the property if they weren't well aware of that covenant and restriction that, that went with the property that they acquired. So that, that is still to be determined. We have to figure out the best means of getting it back in front of the ZBA. Uh, the city engineer and myself feel that that sidewalk should be constructed in accordance with our ordinance. But um, I did want to have a follow up on what our role is as commissioners and what our recommendation should be that um, the conditions of the ordinance be complied with or in, in some instances, if we feel it's reasonable, then they we can make a recommendation that they seek a waiver. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. Commissioner Huntington? Well, you know, oftentimes we don't have that information, you know, like what you're telling us right now. We didn't have the information in front of us, so we had no way of knowing uh, what happened 40 years ago. So that was part of our decision. Commissioner Griffiths? To clarify, you're, you're saying they're required to put I don't know the number, five, six hundred, eight, eight hundred fifty eight linear, eight hundred fifty eight linear feet as as that was indicated when the waiver was was first granted as a temporary waiver. But they're not required to punch a hole through their fence. Well, I through, to or? be honest with you, I was trying to meet the intent of the ordinance by having them connect to the existing sidewalk system. They made an argument about safety in the gated community. And it was after that that we discovered, Mr. Spence and I saw that the sidewalk was first uh, on the plan that was approved and we were wondering why it wasn't approved. After further research, we found that the ZBA had granted this temporary waiver. Hmm. So if they put the sidewalk in, then they meet the intent of not only the ordinance today, but what with the, the conditions were from yesteryear. Interesting. Commissioner Willis? I 
I, I kind of like where we were, and, and again, I understand your comment, I kind of like where we are because what we also do is hear what you have, we get as much information that we have, and then we put it together. Other than that, we're a piece of paper and you check the boxes and you get a, a, a guaranteed result. Um, I, I, think, I think, yeah, we're gonna make a mistake. I think that's gonna happen. I think we're not gonna have all of the information that's gonna happen, but I think the definition of what we are is that kind of human review of some of those documents. And what we need to do is kind of give it best faith based on our best information. And I, and, and, and again, as uh, Commissioner Huntington said, there was some information that we didn't have. I don't know if it would have made a difference because I was really convinced that we were, we were on the right path, but I think we needed to have the information and we needed to do that. And I think we are going to make mistakes. And, I'm, and I think we need to just do the best we can. And I don't see that as a, a, a shortcoming, you know, so. Just, we, just we, we should have discovered that prior to okay. the meeting. So we, we didn't do our dil, due diligence. And I'm only using this as a teaching moment, mm -hmm. okay? Um, that's all, and we can agree to disagree, but um, when it comes to trying to follow the ordinance requirements, there was, there's two requirements on the books that require a sidewalk be installed one foot inside the right of way adjacent to the property okay. and it be connected. Now if that sidewalk is constructed, they have connectivity technically to Franklin Road and eventually it connects. And again, we, at the time of the Planning Commission, we were unaware of this previous CBA waiver. Sometimes we do our best to, to, um, to look at waivers on sites and also Sometimes there's consent agreements that we may or may not be aware of, and things that are done 40, 50 years ago are not always recorded properly, so sometimes we have to go through the, the paper trail to find these things. And again, I, um, don't get me wrong, this is just for a teaching moment for both of us, but um, I, it is um, something that we, we strive to try to Make sure you have all the information so you can make an educated and informed recommendation. Now, Commissioner Martin? What do we do to, so this doesn't happen again? Well, again, it's just yeah. some, we dropped the ball by not having that information available. And I'm just reminding us that we shouldn't put our feelings of we feel bad for this guy because he has to spend this kind of money putting the sidewalk in. That's part of development. We have all these regulations in there. Um, for public health, safety, and welfare issues. And um, I admit was in favor of the project, and we're also trying to meet the intent of the ordinance. And in my opinion, walking through the internal road system didn't meet the intent of the ordinance. I tried to lay out uh, a more cost-effective way of meeting the intent of the ordinance, and um, they chose not, not to do that. And really, it's through our investigation that we found this other requirement that we, we still have to get some resolution on. I think there were some members of the council that felt that it was an unnecessary burden, and also that 40 years have gone by, and why wasn't this discovered before? Well, we have a lot of situations where things were built under un older standards, <laughs> and they're technically, you know, the term is, is maybe overused as grandfathered in, but when you construct new development or do major redevelopment, you have to meet today's standards. For the whole development. Commissioner Goodwin Dye. Didn't we um, ask the petitioner to seek a waiver? And the well, that was, I think, part of the argument is that he should seek a waiver for that connectivity. But a w as he stated the other night, a waiver was already granted, but it was a temporary waiver. And so um, we, we just have to, we have to go back to the ZBA and have them interpret that original condition to see if they feel that it sh he should be compelled to put it in now or, or not. In our opinion, as staff, uh, as the city planner and the city engineer, we feel that he should put it in. There was other issues about the drainage and ditch and the cost. That's really irrelevant to, to the uh, requirement that it needs to be done and it needs to be done properly. But we are going to uh, look into it further and 
I'll report back what our findings are. Okay. Commissioner Benuti. Well, I really appreciate the both of you for doing this because they've been kicking the ball forward all these years and the buck is going to stop here. So I just want to thank you for doing this so that we can, we can correct what, what hasn't been uh, corrected and again, for some time. I, I mean, I give this spiel all the time. We are the fastest growing community in the 1960s with a very auto dominated land use pattern. Our predecessors didn't think about walkability and connectivity, but we certainly for the last 10 years, and as you know, um, every development we require the sidewalk to be installed. We have, um, I think we've added up, we have over 19, 20 linear miles of sidewalks, pathways, and bike paths that have been installed <coughs> either through the city's efforts or through private development. So we're a much more com connected community. One of the top three things that keeps coming up with the master plan is bikeability and walkability. walkability. And yes, you know, what, what is the, um, you know, what is the rate of return on this walkability on Matra? Well, we really don't know because it's not walkable yet. There's partial development. You got to start somewhere. And if, if uh, the, the developer puts in 858 feet and he has, he's come around um, Franklin Road with a connection, then maybe it makes sense for the three or four single family units that are left over that the city goes in and, and does that gap using Metro funds. And now the whole neighborhood becomes connected. Does anyone else, does any commissioner have additional comment? Not on that specific item, but when we were reviewing the Platte Moran property, I mentioned that I thought there was no sidewalk on it. There are sidewalks. However, there's a bridge over the Rouge tributary there, and that has a walkway, and it stops at Cherie Zedek, and there's no sidewalk here. I've noticed people walking that street time and time again on a daily basis. Uh, so that's something we need to consider when, and, and looking at the fill-in sidewalks, and that's a long stretch. And, and I know there's some challenges too. with the grade there, but again, all we can do is if, if, if the Plant Moran development has some gaps in the sidewalk, we make them and install it to the edge of their property. Well, they're, they're good. Yeah, and then when um, maybe when the city comes in or if Sherry Zedek ever does any future development, then we look at that piece. If you recall, Bell Road did not have sidewalks adjacent to Sherry Zedek. Oh, that, that was going to be and, my next And that question. was installed as part of the redevelopment of Bell Road. Yeah, they're talking uh, on the plan, there's a repavement of uh, Northwestern Highway there, 11 Mile. And is it, do you think it's possible to include a sidewalk with the? Well, street? again, I'll have to consult with the city engineer. I mean, I, we try to do complete streets where possible, but sometimes the cost is and um, the burden for the city to take on, especially on those steep slopes, yeah. doesn't justify doing it under uh, an MDOT let job. But that's something that I'm continuously working with the city engineer on and the feasibility of filling in gaps in certain areas that are adjacent to road projects. If there are no other comments, feedback, or miscellaneous, I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 9.08. If, if I may, through the chair to the commission, <laughs> if I may, you know, if I could just bother you just for like about five minutes or so, part of the um, the master plan documents, we like to have images of like the planning commission or or the public uh, engaging in the, the maps. We didn't get to do that, unfortunately, when we had our mapping portions. So if it's possible to just give me about five minutes of your time, if I set these up in the other room, if we could just look like we're doing something, you know, doing something <laughs> with them so I could take some pictures, then we could at least get some images in the master plan. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. You have my five minutes in two minutes because I have a stop to make. <laughs>